Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Comic Book Chronicles. Um, you may want to turn that down just a smidge because it's, it's a little hot. But nevertheless, um, coming in hot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Ryder Cat, and you can find me at Ryder Cat on Twitter. You can also find me at News Knows Need on Twitter and CB Caps on Instagrams. And the man behind that particular sound effect is the man who can answer this question. Is Brooklyn in the house? Without a doubt. One agent underscore 70 on Twitter and Instagram. What's up, everybody? I'm on location in upstate New York. I am not in Brooklyn right now. But you know what? I got a couple things to say to that. One of which is... And the other is... Um, I was wondering when that one was going to rear its head. Yeah, I've got to cut that one clean, but I definitely pulled that up because I am on location. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a little different. My uh, my setup is a little different, so bear with me, folks. But uh, you know, we're going to hang in there and get this week's show in uh, because next week is Thanksgiving. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yes, right. Get your rest up for that Black Friday shopping and the Turkey Day shenanigans. Um, but not with us tonight. It's PCN underscore dirt on Twitter, Pop Culture Nets on Twitter, popculturenetwork.com, and all of the umbrella sites they're in. And also not with us tonight is the Osiris of this ish. One, Tim, D-O-G-G-9-8 on Twitter. Uh, CB Cron on Twitter, that is the Combo Chronicles uh, account. Uh, also, The Click Nation on Twitter, D-K-L-I-Q-N-A-T-I-O-N, TheClickNation.com. And also, Combo Resources, where he's over to writing his face off. <laughs> Try to go over there, go check him out, read his stuff, give him some clicks, tell him what up. Don't tell him what up, tell him, hey, yo, you write good. There like, you go. Like some Parappa the Rapper stuff. I don't know. That's not <laughs> Parappa the Rapper. That's not even how that goes. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> <laughs> but you can find this here podcast on the coast of the podcast net network. That's CSPN.us. Do it today. Indeed, and you can also find this here podcast on Google Play, Apple iTunes. Uh, AKA Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and the Coastal of the Podcast Network SoundCloud page. And we will start as we do every week with the comic books of the week, starting with The Immortal Hulk number 27. Yes, sir. Yes, this is a book. Now, it's no, if you've been paying attention to the show for any length of time, more specifically at the very least 27 months. Um, <laughs> yeah. you will know that this book is consistently, consistently um, a favorite of ours. And this week is no different. I want to say there's, there's, there's more exposition in this one than, than a lot of times, because usually there's a better mix. But even in that, this book does better than a lot of other books. Right. Uh, just as a quick aside, I want to say that I believe this book double shipped at certain points in the run. Double shipped uh, okay. went oh. bi-weekly. So sure. I um, don't think it's been a full 27 months, but it's definitely been a good solid run by Al Ewing and very few fill in artists for Joe Bennett, who did suffer a uh, loss uh, in his family recently yes, so our condolences to the Bennett family. But uh, this issue is the start of what has been teased or the payoff to what has been teased by Al Ewing recently with the two with, with the two personas Bruce Banner and one of the various Hulks um, at some point coming to an uneasy truce and we see what has been teased come to fruition in this issue and we also see something that uh, you know, Roddy and I were speaking about this just before coming on. Al Ewing has uh, turn rock, turned rocks on uh, the corporation, the nefarious corporation in 
uh, the Marvel Universe, you know, this has been a long simmering development. You know, we've seen Roxxon playing a, an evil role in lots of things, but uh, in, in in recent comics, uh, from everything from Captain America to Iron Man to the Avengers to to Thor, oh. especially, mm -hmm. we've seen Roxxon take a, a, a key role in providing um, uh, villainous acts. You know, especially led by one Dario Agar. And, right. uh, and, and back in the day, so just I'm sorry, just for a little, little context, oh, for it's not that far different from what they used to be. Like anytime where there was something that's some nefarious around that wasn't Hydra or AIM, it was probably Roxxon. Correct. Um, and so they are pretty much still serving that role now. The difference is that back then they were more energy focused. Uh, and as uh, has, you know, stated in this issue, Dario Agar and what um, what Agent Seven was probably about to say has shifted the company into a more um, social media and other focused, um, a, a more diversified company. Let's say, sure, more of a global domination type thing too, because we have a very diversified portfolio, as the case may be, and as as we were literally just discussing right before coming on. Roxxon is not just into energy, but it's into obviously uh, fossil fuels. It's into social media. It's kind of an amalgamation of several of today's biggest corporations in the, the real world, including Amazon and uh, Exxon, obviously. Right. I feel like there's a tech branch where there's a phone or something that may have been mentioned at some point, but I might be wrong. I know there's been a Stark phone reference, but it was probably also a Rocks phone or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like even media also, obviously, because they're, they're, there's, they have news as well, right? Exactly. They're basically the Fox news of the, of the, um, of this universe as, as well as other, um, notable amalgamation of companies, right? Or companies. So. Which is 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 an interesting take. I mean, it's definitely um, is it's definitely a um. They 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 they're it's not necessarily their status has changed, but like said like you said, their their portfolio is diversified and dipping their toes in a lot of things. And like you just said, it's more of a world domination thing, which was always their case. However, they were more singular back then because like it was all about energy. Now they're just kind of running the board. Exactly. And everything. Right. And this issue is about the Hulk strike taking a strike at them. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to see the Hulk's tactical uh, uh, decision making in on display in this issue. The, the amusing thing about that is it's a real if, if something like that were to happen in the real world, it would pretty much have a similar effect. Yes. Yeah. Um, because there's spoiler alert, um, the Hulk send, uh, goes on a search of strike to one of, uh, Roxxon's, well, actually it's Roxxon's main, uh, basically data center for social media and, and, um, and web services and whatnot. Right. And just uh, basically takes them down because there's, it's not heavily guarded, but it's, he well, it's heavy enough guarded, but heavy. It's not heavy enough for the Hulk, apparently. Right. Right. There's a couple of things to take into consideration. One, it's pretty heavily guarded, uh, given the creatures or, or the, uh, the the creations of Roxxon that are put into place. Right. But what we have in this issue is uh, we find out that, as I was mentioning earlier, several aspects of the Hulk's person personas are working in tandem now. Mm -hmm. And not only that, which we'll, well, I guess, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, Cause you, I was about to get to the, to the end of the book. Oh no. I mean, I'm there. I'm there. That's where I, I was just kind of alluding to it. So if you want me to ring the spoiler bell, uh, yeah, go I'll for it. do it. So uh, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so because of this um, increasing, you know, work in tandem that the whole personas are doing, apparently some kind of way, uh, the limitation that the Hulk had in the beginning of the series, and that is 
he only came out at night where Danner Banner was uh, running through the day. That limitation has seemed to have been um, um, taken out. It is. It is no longer. No, it doesn't seem to be valid anymore. Because in the beginning of the book, um, it was questioned as to why he was doing the strike almost, you know, close to in the morning, which apparently we did not know, but the Hulk did, and or Banner did at, at the time, and kind of find out. We now know why it ends the book because like I said, that limitation is no longer um, no longer a problem for him. Right, and it's speculation, but it makes some sense that. Uh, at least on my for, from my perspective, that the reason for this the immortal Hulk's uh, weakness to the sunlight and, and and daytime changes was a direct result of whatever dissociation between the Banner persona and the immortal Hulk persona. Right and now that we have these disparate parts of uh, the Hulk working together, and as as Roddy Cat mentioned. There's solid exposition by the Hulk yeah. in this that explains exactly what's happening as we get to the somewhat of a cliffhanger ending, exactly what's happening. So we 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 have uh, descriptions in uh, the dialogue really mm-hmm. that uh, that basically tell us what is happening and why the status quo of the Immortal Hulk has changed as of this issue. And it's really, this entire issue was so solid. And it's nothing, you know, we expect nothing less from Al Ewing. But this one definitely has moved uh, chess pieces around the board like, uh, you know, like few in the recent past. Right. In fact, you not that I think about it, because if you think about the how the story went, or more importantly, at the beginning of the story, um banner was there at first and what we come to find out is that it was already nighttime when he was going through this and then he went on the strike like right close today which means he was banner all night so Mm -hmm. but you didn't really think about that until that really come up in the end of the book it was like well wait a minute that whole time it was nighttime he was already banned so clearly he had it under control and which you know goes into the daytime thing so I'm like, oh, because when I because when I thought about that and, and got to the last page, it was like, oh wait, so that means this whole time he was bannered and he basically got control of the Hulk and you know he can shift that wheel like he well like he could in in the past, in right? Past versions of, right? It's just a new incarnation of the Hulk. It's a new iteration. So if you know, I I'm enjoy I enjoy the fact that they're that they I hope will. Uh, take it to Dario Agar because he's deserved this since War of the Realms, since Thor, mm-hmm. and which they bring up, right? Exactly. And what's funny, and 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 I'm glad that Roddy Cat reminded me of that. It, it's funny that they actually bring up the fact, and it's a shout out to Al Ewing for taking um, real world parallels and um, putting them into this book. Um, it, it, it's funny that. Roxon and specifically Dario Agar, who is basically ha- who's been outed as a superpowered semi villain as the head of Roxon, being responsible for the War of the Realms, and still their stock prices have rebounded. Right. You know, their business hasn't yeah. gone in the toilet. Is it, yeah, exactly, and a lot of it is basically as um as as was said, you know, there are real world parallels and definitely some um real world world dialogue that yes. can be taken uh from from the pages of this book. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can you can definitely tell while you know while Ewing's kind of um you know doing his thing on the comics front, he's definitely which is no stranger to you know he's been doing this, this the whole time. Uh, with, with this book, but you know, like I said, there are times where it's just more noticeable than others, like this book. I mean, like this issue, where it's just like, okay, there's some real world commentary that's going on in here, and greed. So, which also makes it a great book. So, I mean, you know, it's, just, you know, it's a great, great read. Like, yeah, great so, read. Central click of the week for me. I had a ton of fun. You know, always, uh, Hulk is one of those books that find its way to the top of my reading list every week. So, you know, whatever it's out. So, yeah, like there's a rare occasion where it doesn't like, like I think 
I didn't get to the last book for some odd strange reason, but it wasn't for lack of not wanting. It wasn't because I didn't want to. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> so, right. 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 Absolutely. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that. If you you know if if what started out as pretty much a more seemingly horror focused book kind of transitioned into um, whatever this is now. It's even gone cosmic, you know, in a in a in an issue two pass. So it's kind of going all over the place. It's it's been on a journey. Yeah. As you mentioned, it may not have oh. been twenty seven months, but there's definitely been a twenty seven issue journey. Oh, so going back on that, I think I want to say if it was uh bi weekly, I think that was at the beginning of the I feel like that was at the beginning of the run and then it did it went into a monthly. Yeah, went, right. I, I think so too. Yeah. Cause yeah, because I, I I'm fairly certain it wasn't like in the middle. Cause I do remember when it first started, it was like, yeah, we were kind of getting books like seemingly left and right, and then it smoothed out. Mm -hmm. oh, but either way, it's been good regardless of how long it's been. So yes, it's it's really, you know, it's a shame that uh, at New York Comic Con the there was pretty much no line in front of Al Ewing when he was signing, hmm. and it's a shame. I was there, you know, uh, they had just launched Immortal Hulk. They were maybe three issues or four issues into it when I first saw him at uh, New York Comic Con. So I got my first issue of Immortal Hulk signed. And now that uh, they're, um, you know, into their second year um, of the book, you know, there still wasn't that big a line. There were definitely more than a few people uh, up there getting their Hulk stuff signed and other stuff that Al Ewing had written. Like, um, uh, what, was it? what was the Avengers book that he wrote that you were a big fan of? Oh, um, um, uh, well, he wrote Ultimates, um, but right. he also wrote, um, yeah, he, he wrote a few of them actually. Right. He definitely wrote Ultimates. I'm trying to think of the, the Hickman, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. You know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about, but I can't remember the book right now. But yeah, because it was like with, um, with the uh, Sunspot and all of them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I can't remember. So yeah, I mean, I, can I, so, so listen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we read so many books. We go through so many comic events. Yeah, and, and we don't even we don't even have time to go like all the Valiant stuff and all of the uh, the indie books that are that come out like excellent. So it's uh, you know, forgive us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, I'm almost caught up on that. So that's you know, that's a, you know. That's a matter of time. But yeah, like I wouldn't, you know, hearing about Al Ewing from like a few years ago. Let's see, he did some Avengers Assemble, Ultimates, Mind of Yeah, he did do that run of Mind of U.S. Avengers. U.S. Avengers, thank you. That was also yeah, that was pretty good, you know. So yeah, I think um, Avengers World, uh, I might have been because I know yeah he did. I'm looking at the list, and it, it, it's it's it is what it is. But yeah, there's a few books back in the day that was more more comedic, which is why it was weird coming to Immortal Hulk. Because it's like okay, he's going. It's going to be kind of more. Most of his stuff from back then was kind of lighter, you know, more more fun. Not saying that this is, isn't, but uh, was more fun and more light. Mm -hmm. Um, and during that that period, so coming from that into this is like okay, well, this is going to be a lighter book. And no, <laughs> no, it was not. Like there was there was a more horror focus in this, like which is you know which is a testament to him as a writer, you know. To, to be able to do that, not saying that he probably didn't have it in him already, but he just didn't have a chance to, you know, pull it out. Absolutely. So it's you know, it's he's definitely been a been a, a writer on my radar for for a few years now, and been enjoying all of his work, including one we'll talk about later that didn't come out this week that he's not going to be on any longer. But that's a whole other story. Um, so let us move on because I think we've pretty much run that one out. To do you want to go ahead and get to uh, King Thor? Oh, you wanted to do that next? I thought we were going to do the a uh, couple of the events that came out this week. Okay, we could do that. So, Amazing Spider-Man number thirty-four. Sure. Um, this is well, I guess you could say it's not necessarily the start because the, technically that whole twenty ninety-nine thing kind of already started last issue, but uh, we are getting into it deep, I guess. Yes. Or starting to get into it deep, uh, even though this is feels still more tangentially tied to it. Like, yeah, there's some things that, like, um, um, so Spider-Man 2099 is in it. He's finally found, finally found Peter uh, in the midst of dealing with this whole situation with um, one Doctor Doom, which who will come up in two other books this week. 
Um, <laughs> uh, weirdly enough, um, I'm sur- actually, yeah, I'd be surprised if the other ones come out because that, that's the real question. The extra question I got, but anyway, so th- because there was a plot against Doom and that had something to do with the Sim Cole Simkarian thing and whoever that lady is, I can't remember who. Um, uh, and apparently, all of this is in, in the midst of the 2099 stuff, which apparently Doom has a you know, has a somewhat of a hand in, um. On that side, because Doom had a book, 2099 book, so it's it's all going back to that. I think he was the first 2099 book, wasn't he? I think I the, the first one was Spidey. Was it? I think so. Okay. It was one and two, because I remember that when people were talking about that. Yeah, I definitely remember people talking about the Spidey book, but the, the the you know that Doom 2099 book was also whatever, and obviously 20, uh, Iron Man or whatever, which hadn't shown its... Right. This was, ladies and gentlemen, this was back when 2099 was kind of far away still. <laughs> yeah, and granted, we're still, as as a matter of fact, in the back of this book, they talk about the reason which we have heard, heard before as to why this 2099 event, or mini event, is going on because of a writer's retreat uh, and Matt Rose, Rosenberg, who's not a part of the 2099 thing, who's also doing another book, uh, an event book from this week, uh, kind of thought about it, which I thought it was Sly. I thought, well, I know I remember seeing something from Sly about this. Mm-hmm. So he might have been the one relaying that if that it happened from that. But I could have, I thought it had, I thought Sly had more to do with it than what the back of the the, the letters page suggested. But anyway, like I said, it was a suggestion from from Matt Rosenberg, and that blossomed into what we're getting right now, because we are now in 2019, 80 years from 2099. So they decided to do a little mini event for it when they said they weren't going to do any. Well, well, they didn't think I'm that sure. it was a good time, but you know, well, no, cause I'm, I'm going back to that. They said no line wide uh, events. Oh, I see that whole thing, even though there's been a bunch of, bunch of mini events that kind of circumvent all of that. Right. But, but serendipity, they, uh, I was about to say serendipity kind of ruled in this case. So yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, like I said, um, so this, so the events of this, uh, issue are in a way kind of kicking that off, but not really because because if the book we get to next, which I know you haven't read yet, and I'm not going to go too far into, mm-hmm. it doesn't really have much to do with Amazing Spider-Man. Right. What I was just going to add is having not read the kickoff Alpha book for this event, I I can't describe. I can't get into how this is connected, and I'm glad that you just mentioned that. At least at this point, we still don't see all of the connections. Right. I just think that this issue, um, as a as a secondary lead in, as in you know the the previous issue was the first lead in. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, this issue at least shows that shows us that there may have been ramifications. Uh, you know, long lasting and far reaching ramifications based on the attempt upon Dr. Doom. Um, you know, that 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 uh, happened in the first issue, and we saw, um, the 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 not so clean cut results in this issue. We'll put it that oh, way. And I was about to say, and a another long standing, almost tropish type thing, especially dealing with Dr. Doom happens again in this book and another book that we'll be talking about because of course because now Doom, Doom has his own book right now where he's dealing with stuff and then of course he shows up here in Amazing Spider-Man and he shows up in another book um, later later on and, and including the um, the, the 299 Alpha but that's you know a, a whole other situation um, it's amusing to see that thing come back into play not that it's never left but you know, it's like, okay, sure. That it was something that we used to see long time fans would be like, Yeah, every time you see Doom turn around, it turns out to be not Doom. Mm-hmm. If you enough that's if you if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So so lead us into the twenty ninety nine books that you covered this week. So so basically, yeah, don't the, the, the just, just amazing Spider Man is that uh, May, uh, uh Miguel finally finds out, tells Peter what's going on, and then pops it. So which kicks off everything, which goes into the twenty ninety nine alpha number one, which has absolutely nothing to do with anything that happened in um uh Amazing Spider Man. However, the only tie is because of the fact that it's Miguel shows up. Okay. Uh and and it's because he's in his own timeline and it's 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 kind of weird. Um like I said, there is there is no connective tissue. Like this is not him saying like, well, I got to go back, and then this is not him before, um, you know, before 
the events of the last uh, Amazing Spider-Man or anything. This is like he shows up in the form that he did, you know, originally in 2099 uh, as a geneticist. Okay. Um, and I believe it looks like they're, you know, like this is not really spoiler, but, you know, just something. Alchemex is involved. You know, there's, I think it looks like there might be some work with his powers or something that gets dug up. But then it starts going into other stuff and kind of starts linking into the other titles of which one of them comes out this week uh, that, that'll, that I'll mention. And um, I will say, uh, that's kind of a spoiler. So, well, if you read my notes, it's going to be a spoiler anyway. But regardless, um, Dr. Doom is kind of sort of involved, like I already mentioned. Um, and he is uh, involved. Somebody I thought was not around anymore in his dealings, um, which is weird to see. And it, what we come to find out is, is it is this person who hasn't been seen for a minute because they were in a certain state. And that is, that was weird because when I saw that, I was like, that can't be actually him. And come to find out it somehow, some way is. And I don't understand how, and they haven't really said that, and I don't know, don't know if they ever will. But regardless, the, the gist of it is they, this uh, book kind of it kind of kicks off um, ties to all of the other books, short in short order. You know, like you see, hey, there's a character from this other book that comes out, and there's a character from these other books. You know, they're basically setting up the world uh, of the 2099 event with this book. So, and everybody who's going to have a book, pretty much everybody who's going to have a book um, or has had a book um, as of this week, you know, shows up. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the way I kind of want to. It's there's. Oh, oh, sorry. No, it's all right. There's a couple of parts like when you read it, I kind of I'm I'm you'll get to the the same thing. You'll get to the head the same head scratch that I will when you read it, because <laughs> I'm like, well, wait, what? Um, but I will be interested to see what you think about this issue when you read it. All right. Um, and I guess to tie out to, to finish the that up, uh, Fantastic Four twenty ninety nine number one also came out this week. Um. And again, the only tie to the last book is the fact that, hey, there's a character that shows up in that book that's that kind of kicks off what goes on in this book. And this one was a weird one. Because if you think about Fantastic Four and you, you think about, you know, four specific people uh, or future versions of them, which none of that necessarily plays. And the only thing I will say about this book, is, since you would not have read it, um, Herbie shows up. <sighs> okay. Um, matter of fact, Sh Herbie, Herbie also shows up in the Alpha book, but he's kind of the catalyst of what goes on in this book. Uh, and I mentioned that for a specific reason. And what that reason is, you will see when you read it. And that is the weird part about this, what ends up being, what ends up happening. Because you go along in this book and it's like, okay, well, this is happening. You're looking to see parallels, you know, from, from past books or whatever, but, or whatever. But it doesn't necessarily happen like that. It's far from it, in fact. Um, oh, I will go ahead and say something else. Going back to, so there's a checklist at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 34 that is different from this checklist, that's slightly different from the checklist that's in 2099 Alpha number one. Because Amazing Spider-Man has 2099 Alpha number one first, and then Amazing Spider-Man number 34, and they're flipped in 2099 Alpha number one, if you look at the, the uh, checklist. It doesn't really matter because, like I said, they don't they don't really tie. Like said, the only tie to it is the fact that Miguel shows up. That's it. There's no okay. nothing, no no other connective tissue. So don't even worry about the reading order in that respect. In fact, even the Fantastic Four. Well, obviously you want to read Twenty Nine Nine Alpha before Fantastic Four, but uh, even then the tie is just basically like, hey, this is a thing. It's basically just like like they've been doing it in Avengers and other books. It's like, hey, this is a thing that's coming up, you know, or this person shows up or blah blah blah, and then. You'll see them in another book. Okay. So, all righty. Pretty much that in a nutshell for that stuff. It's I'm, I'm it's, it's kind of early to see whether it's going to be interesting or not. Mm -hmm. But definitely that Fantastic Four twenty nine that was was a, a interestingly weird read, especially at the end. All right. Um, okay. Not just the only other uh, 
the uh, the only event book we got if we want to get to that one. Yeah, I was about to say President Bartlett. What's next? Is uh, Annihilation Scourge Alpha Number One. Well, so there is an event book that there's an event that wraps actually this week, but uh, none of us read it. But apparently, someone on the panel did. Oh right, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we will talk about that when we get to clicks of the week. Well, we'll mention that at the very least because <laughs> neither none of us t- read it, so we can't really talk much about it. But mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, and now so. I was going to start off by saying you've read Annihilation, correct? Yes. I have not fully read it. And in fact, I think I've read some stuff tangential around it, like Guardians or whatever. I've mentioned this before, so it's whatever. So I'm I only know like little bits of what actually happened in Annihilation, which doesn't necessarily play into what's going on here, except for the fact that you see basically two um already at war factions ended up teaming up because of something's going on in both of their worlds right and really the tie to the the previous annihilation related events is that it's in space and it involves several of the same characters and as roddy cat mentioned um one of the um uh one of the, the the causes of the first annihilation event is part of the plot in this annihilation story but is not the main bad guy and that is a reveal that believe it or not i haven't spoiled it yet but believe it or not is actually at least uh teasingly revealed at the end of this issue yeah because at first when i saw that reveal it was like wait a minute i thought Agents of Wakanda took care of that. But then I thought about what happened in the course of this issue. It was like, wait, okay, that's not that has nothing to do with that. All right. So let me ring the spoiler bell so we can speak a little freely about it. But at the same time, we will we will not completely spoil everything, and we'll, right. we'll tread on the lighter side. So I mean, just- realistically, at this point, there's not that much to spoiler. I mean, this is basically just setting up. The, the goings on of uh, of this exactly, event. but it's interesting at least because I've read a lot of the annihilation stuff before. That's why it's a little interesting to see right. um, how this has developed. So let me just ring the bell in three, two, one. So getting back to what uh, what Roddy Cat was mentioning earlier about the previous annihilation stories, uh, the first annihilation wave was. Uh, unleashed at the behest of Annihilus, Mm -hmm. hence the name of the event Annihilation. Um, After that, uh, you know, various um, uh, follow-up stories to that first crossover event basically uh, involved the same um, the, the, the same characters but with different um with, with different bad guys to face in this in this particular um spin-off of the annihilation event um we have annihilus and blastar two long-standing rivals two long-standing sometimes frenemies but mostly enemies yes doing the whole frenemy thing in this issue and it's a very interesting dynamic of course we see very little of the spacefaring heroes in this issue until the very end, really. Right. And yeah, and the one that does come up, which if we had if if we had to depend on that clown for <laughs> to to um to save the world, we'd be in trouble. But I know people people love them some 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 Richard Ryder, so you know. Right. It's funny that uh Well, see, the thing is, if you had read the initial Annihilation story, Mm -hmm. you would understand why people became fans of the character and are not happy with this particular development for the character. Right. You know, Uh, I'm not happy about this particular development of the character because of the way they kind of graduated Richard Ryder in that first Annihilation series mm. from, you know, new warrior teen sidekick type person. So that's why it's a little disappointing from my perspective and from people's perspective. Uh, for those who read the first Annihilation limited series, it is very disappointing to see uh, Richard Ryder uh, portrayed in this way. Mm-hmm. Hopefully there's redemption in the future uh, for the character, but 
um, at this point, it is uh, kind of sad, um, you know, to see to, to see the character portrayed in this manner. Um, but uh, that's really towards the end of the book, and we get to the final reveal as Blastar and Annihilus are on the run, trying to, um, you know, trying to uh, 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 free. Mm-hmm. Or at least um, stave off the destruction or the the conquering of the negative zone, right? And trying to figure out, trying to trying trying to figure out who's um, who's behind it, right? One time, right? And it's funny because it really was a uh, at least a ty- a, a well kept secret for me because I was genuinely surprised. Yeah, I was too. But at the same time, it was like, oh, Jesus, not this. <laughs> it's a character that that I, I would dare say at least half of the panel, the whole panel, not just us two. Um, actually, no, no. It's like, kind of groan inducing. Yes, but the scene it actually was when I when I saw the reveal. Right, but at the same time, given some of the developments that this character has had over the last year or two, it makes sense. It's just that it feels like this aspect of the character has become slightly overused. Well, except for I don't know if it's that I like I said earlier, I don't believe it's the same like yes, it is that character, but I think it is a different version because of the, the other universe that is that is involved here that, that gets brought up here. I think it's that universe's version, which is weird. Oh. Right. It could be that. Right. right, Exactly. It could be that. It could be that because, um, you know, what we have are um, uh, what we have are uh, sets of characters that are um, that became uh, big members of um, or big parts of some of the more recent uh, annihilation type crossovers. So here, let me go ahead and since we already uh, spoiler belled it, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. So Richard Rogers involved. Uh, if you think back, um, probably a couple of years ago when he came, like yeah, about a year or two when he came back. Oh, from, where he came back from right. That's really exactly. that right. That's what I'm getting to. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So he came back from this place, which is the Cancerverse. I'll go ahead and say that now. So yeah. that name may may ring some folks. And of course, the the Hit Squad that was from the, the Cancerverse shows up in this book. Um, and looks like the big threat is coming from that universe. So, there, so it is my thought that the big, big, big bad at the end of this book is, like I was just saying, from that universe as opposed to the one that's from this universe. Right, because the one from this universe has a different has dealt with. Right. Well, and actually has been, yeah, has been dealt with as far as, uh, as, as of recent as a couple of weeks ago. Dealt with, but, uh, but at the same time, you know, Quarter, still, yeah. Right, exactly. But still, uh, the the status quo has changed, including costume and you know, you know what I mean, and personality. So it's kind yeah. of uh, interesting to see if that will be touched upon. Yeah, well, to, yeah. Which is why I just went ahead and like, well, knowing that the cancer versus well, not, that's why I just went ahead and said, like, it's, it can't be that one. Right. I mean, it would very well, but I, I I find it hard to see how and why. It would be interesting to see how the Cancerverse twists this particular character that way. Right. So that being said, and I, actually, and to bring about the Ridge Rider part, as I am would be curious to see if they're going to bring, you know, his coming back from there uh, into into play. That's actually been dealt with to a certain extent in recent um, Nova issues. Oh, and in, in Nova. Okay. Right, recent Guardian Nova issues, if I'm not mistaken. Like, uh, not recent, because obviously Nova hasn't had a series in a while. But right. if you recall, there was a series where both Richard and Sam Alexander were... Yeah, yes, I remember. Right, were playing um, uh, co-starring roles. They dealt with his return from the Cancerverse there. So, right, and that was probably right. I think that was like right after Guardians, if I'm not mistaken, when he came back. So... um. But nevertheless, I'm pretty sure that's still a thing that kind of sticks with him. <laughs> I'm sure even now. But sure. regardless, we're, we're starting to see a coming together of cosmic entities at the end of the book because they're going to be fighting, you know, whatever's going on in this. So I wanted to also bring up, just to kind of wrap this up, um, I was on Twitter like yesterday or before, before and somebody was somebody kind of came at Matt Rosenberg, who was writing this book, 
talking about um oh shoot what was it basically was saying it was like um i guess it, um matt rosenberg just ignored the you know the, the stuff that went ahead with you know that that happened with nova a couple of weeks back and then he just replied back well i guess you ignored the fact that there are the the nova core is dead because of recent you know recent events and in, in, in uh guardians which uh, I believe that was John Cage uh, did that, so it wasn't it wasn't Rosenberg. But nevertheless, it was like the, he basically just took the person to task, <laughs> and it was it was cool to see because it was like, yeah, you like what's wrong with people? Like, how many people don't even have your facts straight? Because I guess they didn't like the way that you know Nova was being handled. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, but I'm 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 willing to see the story through. I'm I'm not. I wasn't particularly enthusiastic about the portrayal. Let's put it that way. Mm, I mean, I, I don't, I, it, you can already tell I'm not that. Yes. You don't. Care. It's yeah, okay. A, you can, I, know, bro, I don't, it's not like I dislike Nova because I like both, both, both versions of Nova, Nova have had their, you know, have had their pluses, but I'm like, yeah, just, I know people like what you're writing. I'm like, I, I don't get why. Cause he was just it comes of, from, it comes from annihilation and that's why I think it's important. Great. Yeah. Right. Because I didn't care about him as a new warrior, <laughs> and I didn't care about him. In yeah, that, like, that is especially because he was yeah you know, a little abrasive back. Then. Right. So in all like that garden type back then, almost right. in all seriousness, uh, that's really where my affection for the character started. So sure, um, that's why I think it's definitely worthwhile for you to catch up on at least the main Annihilation limited series. I don't know if all of the tie-ins are important. There was a lot. Right, but I think the main Annihilation limited series will show you a lot, and maybe some of the Guardian stuff, because the Guardian. Something I was going to bring, yeah, because they were they were rotating Guardians uh, uh, at the time, because that's where the the current crew slash exactly know, the current version exactly came from. So, all right. So, uh, as President Bartlett would say, much next. Um. Okay. Now let's get into King Thor. All right. Uh, we are still at the end of time. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Gore, the God butcher is again, seemingly on the verge of winning. But what we find is that this issue is tying up lots of loose ends. There is a great callback to some of the things that happened at the very beginning of Jason Aaron. Aaron's run some seven years ago. And I would, before uh, I go any further, I want to go so far as to say is I was I was not necessarily wrong about something I said about the last issue, although I did not know it was going to turn out it was going to happen like this because apparently Gore actually was intentional was was responsible for something happening that plays out in his book, but we didn't know that it didn't happen the way you thought it might. Right, because. Yeah, that plan at the time was like basically was like well he's going to do this and then the other but apparently he had all you know unintentionally did something similar well he's back in the all back, part, I'm about to say it was all part of the resolution to the very first god butcher story right and that resolution uh that was in the main thor series and in the god bomb uh, uh special i think it was uh that's what it was in that was referenced i i didn't have a chance to look it up um in my collection to, to double check to make sure that i had it but i believe i do um it's 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 a part of the story that you know you sort of knew but to see it pay off as a thread that you didn't think was dangling to see uh jason aaron pull on that thread and tie it off this issue was really interesting and to see um, Gore not necessarily uh, be overwhelmed at the end of time by the, by the cavalry that gets called in. And we've come to um, the, I guess the, 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 the pen, this is the penultimate issue of Jason Aaron's run. And we shall see where, um, where Gore's uh, uh, necro stuff, we'll put it that way stuff has has gone and what uh, has become of uh the universe as a result of his machinations so you know it's all leading up to a pretty big finale it's exciting i'm enthusiastic about this uh another potential click of the week for me 
um, does uh, cater to some of the longtime readers, but you know, it's a quick Wikipedia search away, people. Eh, sure, it is, but whatever. Um, so the only thing I was going to say um, about that, which I guess I could probably wait till next the next issue, but I think you can agree with me, or you may or may not agree because I know you're a fan of the, the his run, but. There's been a couple of times, well, specifically with coming out of uh, Secret Wars, he, if he had ended it right there, and especially those uh, last couple of issues of Thor that ended the series, if he had ended it right there, it would have been a bravo, you know? And I'm just saying that this is not going to probably have, you know, uh, I'm hoping it's going to come out that same way, but at the same time, like, it's kind of like we were talking with, uh, like with when Dark Strange ended, ended. Like, if it had ended a couple of issues prior, you know, it would have been just great, you know, and I trust Aaron. I, I don't, I don't, I would not be surprised that this is going to be a, a big deal in, in and out. Cause this was, you know, he didn't have to do this, but he, I felt like he, he felt like he wanted to do this, just, just kind of tie up all the Lucians, put everything back in the box, you know, uh, for, to, 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 to cap off his run. And as well as his right to do that. So I'm not even, you know, I'm not. Right. I mean, not, this, is the, this is the, you know, th this is the, uh, the, the the Marvel equivalent to the three endings uh, uh, in Return of the King. So, <laughs> you know, one of the yeah. endings, you know, the ending of the War of the Realms was like everyone gathered in Gondor and everyone bowing to the hobbits, right? So, um, <laughs> well, we still, well, say again? I said, no, that's apt. You're, you're right. Right. So at this point, we're still at... Um, uh, we're still at uh, um, uh, uh, people leaving on the uh, the last bolt from um, uh, from uh, the, the last boat of the elves, you know, and uh, you know we're not yet at Sam um, writing the last chapter, so hmm. that'll be next issue, right? Um, so yeah, we'll see when we get to that point. So I guess maybe one more book, maybe one, uh, cause I do see another book we can both talk about, but we can get to that in rapid fire. Uh, you want to pick the last book? Let's see. Um, I feel like I know where you're going to go if you go where I think you're going to go, but. You know. Well, I mean, you read, you read a lot of books this week. I think the one, oh, we should at least cover one of the Dawn of X books. Yeah, we were going to get there. Sure. Unless, unless you wanted to talk about uh, Mary Jane. Uh, actually, no, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking Arrow. But um, um, I was thinking we should talk about one of the Dawn of X books before we go okay. around fire. So, all right. All right. Oh. So um, I actually um, enjoyed Marauders number two. Okay. Um, talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of – it's still a very quirky concept. Um you know, in this particular issue, we have we we find out that Sebastian Shaw, the Black King of the Hellfire Club, who has been granted um, some uh, under the table, off the books um, business on Krakoa. He's the one who's dealing with the black market um, medicines and exports and imports to Krakoa, but. It, uh, but apparently he's gotten a little greedy, mm -hmm. and and um, and White Queen and the Krakoan Council has has uh, taken it upon themselves to uh, knock him down a couple of pegs using the uh, Kitty uh, Kate Pride and her Marauders, mm -hmm. especially and, um, Emma Frost, who didn't want Sebastian, who who had in issues with Sebastian being on the council in the first place. So she definitely right. was, you know, had a motivation to keep him in check. Right, but it turns out that he was kind of overstepping his mandate. So they, so so we find out that um, for those of you who uh, are keeping up with the Black Cat series, um, one of the recent guest stars in Black Cat shows up in this issue. Zutala, well, it I is. I put that in my notes also. It was like you know, so I guess this is where he was after after his date with Felicia. Exactly. <laughs> Zutala, it is Batroc and it's kind of fun that they don't treat Batroc as 
the baddest of bad guys. They and they don't treat him as a joke either. Yeah. Right. It's just, it, it, it's a very gentlemanly way of dealing with him. Um, you know, it is kind of a joke, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? We know this is just for hire. We're just going to, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to take out this uh, illegal or at least this hijacked um, um, uh, shipment of uh, Krakoan drugs. And, you know, we're going to knock out your ship. But I, I, I really dug the fact that uh, Batrock, uh, his, his status in the, the Marvel Universe is very similar to his status in, in the MCU. You know, he's just a, a good hire. Pretty much. And he's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, he's not necessarily a bad, bad guy. Right. So, so um, oh, yeah, because like I said, when I saw him show up, I was I, just like you, I went directly to the Black Cat thing, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if that was a continuity thing or just coincidence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but regardless, right. You know, uh -huh. right. I was going to say the next thing that we that, that we talked, we had or actually already chatted about before the show started is some huh. of the stuff that happens after uh, this particular um, episode of um, uh, High Seas. Uh, piracy um, uh, uh, stopped. Um, we find out that the events of X Force Number One are still resonating. Well, they 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 just they get caught up on them, definitely. Yeah, right. because apparently it, it still not. resonates. Right, it still resonates in this issue, and mm -hmm. uh, there's some funny follow up to that uh, involving um, body ink. Yeah, some weird and. And I guess you could say maybe this is Kate growing up or whatever the case may be, because this is kind of like, you know, the, the character Kitty Pride has kind of been a way for most of her life. Maybe she has grown some, I mean, mo a lot since her earlier days. Uh, but this is her kind of, I guess you could almost say going against type or at least her usual type, the way she mm -hmm. used to portray. But then yeah, I think just like I said last week, it, this may also give credence to the fact that, well, they're coming from a different place as they were in the past, uh, you know, and her role has changed so many different times and probably changed as much as her costumes. Um, so her. Well, going, not so much, yeah, not so much in recent time, but yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, just in general. But uh, mm -hmm. so her doing this and her, you know, which I'm, I'm really hoping they're going to get back to some at some point about her not being able to get on the island and the apparently these other people who can't get onto the to to, to Krakoa through the even though they're mutants which is really really weird still in in itself right we, and, we're only in issue number two oh, right. I was going to say we're only in issue number two I right. think that we still haven't seen that entire story we're we you know we're we're going to have to see more of that. My, you know, the, my interpretation of it was that those gates are not everywhere. So some people can't get from their country to a country that has a gate. Um, it may, they may not be like Kate in that they can't go through the gates. Well, so, no, but except for they were, when they were rescuing the Russian crew, they were near gates. Like they were stopped, they were being stopped from going through the gates. So right, that the case in that in that respect. No, but not, but but not, but I don't think they were physically stopped by the same way no, Kate. They, was. they very much were by the military at the time. That's why Kate. No, no, that's what I mean. No, but Kate can't go through the gate herself. Oh yeah, I know that. What I'm saying, but the rest of those mutants could. Right, that's oh, right. Presumably, as assumed, but they still kind of maintain the fact that, in the, especially in the um the the. The, the right. we're, we're, we're talking about the same thing. We're just talking across from each other because I think what I was getting at is just that, um, you know, just exactly that access gate as opposed to not being able to go through the gate. Um, so, well, is, well, I mean, yes, there is a little bit of that, but there's, there, there is, um, but this uh, book, this issue actually alludes to the fact that they just can't even if they had access to it, they could not go to the. Or at least that's what it sounds like it's alluding to. Right, we're not sure yet. That's why yeah, I'm getting exactly. back to the whole thing about it's really only the second issue. That's that. That's really that hasn't really been explored at this point. Which, which again, like going back to my original point, it's still kind of weird for, on that respect. But I imagine some of that's maybe that, and some of that might be playing out in other books because if we, as we know, there is some things going on with Kakor in itself in other books. So mm -hmm. that play into it. We don't know, right. but regardless. Um, I this premise of this book has was weird from the beginning, but I do enjoy the fact. And granted, Jerry Duncan's writing it, so you know it's going to be kind of fun, and it is. 
you know, especially given what happens in the, in as we were getting to uh, in the course of this book, where you know after them finding out about a, a Xavier, which still has a, I still have questions about, which I man kind of um, not necessarily. Um, I still have questions about that. So, but especially the way the whole regeneration thing works, but right. that's, that's a whole subject for a whole nother book. Uh, Definitely that, still up in the air, right? Because it happened in X Force. So. Exactly, and and even the whole process of that is still kind of is, is a question because I think he was involved at some point of it. So that's all. Regardless, it, uh, going back to this book, yeah, they they in, they end up getting um, um, after hearing the news, they end up going and getting tats. Um, well, not they. It's really only two. Well, <laughs> right. It was only uh, Kate and Pyro, which you know. Right. It's really <laughs> only two. what's what's funny about Pyro is that you know we joked the, the our my initial joke was that apparently Pyro does not intend on ever getting an office job right. um, based on his tat. But what what occurred to me uh, the second time I thought about it was it's kind of. It's funny that they took the name Marauders, right? Mm -hmm. Where this tat reminded me of a reverse Skullbuster from the Reavers. Mm. I don't know if you recall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, that cyborg group. Yeah, right. They had so, some masks with their, yeah, their face masks. Right. This design is kind of a reverse Skullbuster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if that was uh, 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 intentional or not. I'm going to say it's Pyro, probably not. Like he's just like I'm getting a fucking tat. Let's let's go. <laughs> and it's the most ridiculous thing, um, you know. So, well, maybe not the most, but yeah, definitely a pyro. Moment. No, that's that's like it's pretty. On, I feel like at least especially this version of type pyro just seems on brand. I didn't expect him to get that one. I figured it would have been like a big flame thing on his face or something. Right. But, I think that's what I think that's what threw mm -hmm. me. That fact that he was getting one, I was like, yeah, that's that's that. Now the one that was weird for me was Kate getting the one, especially what she ended up getting. Right. Um, which uh, we'll go ahead and spoil it. Well, actually, no, we won't spoil it. But let's just say the um, Radio Rahim had some similar rings. Kind of, I, but this is definitely pirate. Uh, yeah, it's more of pirate themed, but yes. This is definitely pirate influenced, yeah. and what I was getting to, uh, I think, at the beginning of our discussion on the book, is that um, there is an event uh, or an, a, a development in, that happens in this book that unfortunately had been spoiled in yes. uh, uh, online and in online posts. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of detracted from the ultimate reveal. There have definitely been articles like months ago about. Mm -hmm. this happening or this this particular thing a, a um a title change for for um or a title addition i should say for one kate pride right and it, it basically happened because something wasn't redacted properly on i think one of the power the hox pox books mm -hmm. so it, it did kind of suck to know that this was coming and just be left waiting for it to happen but still i kind of enjoyed the execution of it all other yeah. than other than the 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 pyro tattoo, which just, I'm still just kind of struggling with. Right. Yeah. Basically, if you saw that news from back then and knew and then found out this book was coming, because I don't think we knew. Well, no, we might have actually known that, that it might have been around the time this book was announced. But regardless, yeah, knowing that and you did not know when it was going to play out, but knowing it was actually going to play out, you know, it kind of spoils it a little bit. But like uh, somebody said, yeah, like yeah, it will still execute it fairly well. <laughs> Um, there is still actually some some holes in that though, because you know at the end of the book we still see that there are some positions in the hierarchy uh, hierarchy that have yet to be filled. Oh yes, there's definitely a story point. There's there's definitely stories to be told because there's lots of empty slots. Mm -hmm. So and I assume we'll probably you know if not the experts at large, then this book you know will fill some of that in definitely. Exactly. I about you on a on an off note, but um, I have taken to um, not necessarily learning the alphabet, but ciphering the stuff at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. I haven't, but I I I I I I'd, 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 I'd definitely thought about doing it, like at least printing out the ciphers and just like having it like nearby as I'm reading. Yeah, I just took like I found a a JPEG of the the letters. Mm -hmm. 
that's on, the, so that's what I'm thinking. I that then I kind of went through this one and the, and the other book we'll talk about or I'll talk about or mm -hmm. talk about. Um, and I was like, okay, there's really not much to it given that, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, sure. It is what it is. Right. It's not nearly as entertaining as it was when we didn't have a cipher. <laughs> right. And that's not talking about Doug Ramsey because he, we know he's right. around. <laughs> he is but, around. Um, he's somewhere. He's in space. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And uh, um, one of my questions was answered about Gateway. Oh, yeah. Uh, they brought him back too. Mm -hmm. Which we kind of knew, but it was like, because we haven't seen him, but it was like, well, wait, since, but I wonder if uh, Eden knows. If Matterfold knows he's back, yeah, interesting, and that's just personal thing. Because, like I said, that that whole time, you know, especially the, I guess the number of times I think he's died like twice. Right. That's another callback to the reverse, to be honest. Exactly. Um, so the fact that he was just back and just showed up here, mm -hmm. and, oh, cool. They they either answered, those, and it kind of made me wonder. It's like, wait, did they actually hear me talking about this? And I know they probably already had it in plan months in advance. It's just like you know. Cause I even think they said like you know uh, when the hotspots was going on, it's like yeah, we go. There was an illusion that you'll probably see some people you hadn't seen them by, and since, since the whole thing is ginned up about the over generation, you know, right, who will pop up regardless, right. Um, so that was already built in. So that was Marauders number two, though. Um, I'm continuing to enjoy this book, like the, the the premise being what it is, but I I'm enjoying the funness of this book. You know, I'm curious to see where they're gonna take it. You know, because clearly the, the the whole X universe is, um, you know, that that whole universe is is is, is getting everything out of all of the, the parts of it, as we will see. You know, it definitely in the other X book. If you want to go over that one real quick. Oh, Excalibur. Yeah. Sure. Let me pull that up. Uh, Excalibur number two also came out this week, and I almost put in my notes is like, well, it's a good thing Marauders came out this week because the Marauders ended up showing up <laughs> in this book. Now, this is again, this is going to be old real fast because, like, yeah, this, this, they're all connected together, so of course they're going to show up in each, in each, you know, in each brother's book at some point. Mm -hmm. But it's still at this point fun to see them just like, oh yeah, so, well, here's, you know, here's this part where that hadn't gotten there yet, and. You know, whatever, whatever. So, um, Kitty Pride and the the old boat, I guess, one of the old boats, because even in the um, Marauders book, they basically said that hey, they had to they had to steal various boats um, in the course of their travels until they got the boat they ended up with at, at the end of the oh, in the middle of the issue. Uh, and this was like one of the old. I want to say it might have been the original boat. I can't even. I don't even know. But regardless, Excalibur ends up using it because they were trying to get to, which is still weird because I feel like all of them could. Well, they couldn't. No, I know why. That's right. I forgot why. Because Rogue was in a state where she couldn't move, and I guess they couldn't get her to a gate or something like that. Which it, I don't know. I feel like they they moved her enough to where they could have gotten her through a gate. I don't know. That could be just me. But regardless, well, they didn't have a. I was about to say they didn't have the the whole the the mission was that they wanted to set up a Krakoan gateway on the uh, the island where the Excalibur base used to be. Right. And just very quickly, I don't want to uh, uh, pull on too many loose threads here, but if Gateway's back, why not ask Gateway to send them there? Or any other teleporter they got, because, he, well, yeah, well, Yellen's out in space. But, yeah, there's no short of teleporters in the X-Verse, regardless of the, the, the gates that they have. I agree with you on that. So. But, um, and I think part of what happened in the course of Excalibur is, like, when they said, oh, they, the, well, the gate to Avalon, they killed that one. So that's the whole thing. That's what caused, that was part of the reason why Rogue is on the stage she's in. So, anyway, regardless, they ended up using Kate, uh, Kate Pride and her boat to go to the British Isles um, uh, to take Rogue to take uh, Rogue to to um, uh, Braddock Manor, which I guess is gone now. Or to excuse me, they were going to the lighthouse. Lighthouse, right? Uh, on, I guess base. Yeah, the home of the, the the so yeah. So basically, if you do not know, the old Excalibur crew of which Kate Pryde was a part of used to be held up in a lighthouse, but that apparently has been um, uh, blown up. Right. And I think uh, they were suggesting that Morgan Le Fle had some Fle had something to do with it. I don't know if that was. I think that was actually the case. I'm not sure, or that happened somewhere in one of the last volumes of Excalibur. I think it had something to do with Morgan Le Fay. But regardless, 
they have a new base of operations now in the form of a Krakoan lighthouse because of what happens in this issue. And apparently Rogue in her state is delight. Um, which is kind of not funny because Gambit's not 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 thrilled about the situation. Um, right. And no one no one has any idea. There's a lot of mysticism that has been uh, inserted into this book for obvious reasons, it being Excalibur. So, right. Yeah. That's always been the, the, the part of, uh, that's always been a part of this book. Right. Yeah. So they're definite. So the X-Men that are in this book specifically are definitely out of their element. Um, well, I, I, would, I would say that Apocalypse is the only one that's in his element. Basically. I mean, you could say you can give a case by proxy of Betsy. Because you know, because her brother was Captain Brennan, and his. Oh, given, was, given that her new title has uh, exactly. kind of given her access to this knowledge, but uh, but ultimately, uh, but as far as everybody else, you're right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're all out of their element, and we are dealing with something that is teased during the book, and at the end of the book. There is something happens um, and leaves us on a cliffhanger where it seems that Shogo, Ju, uh, Jubilee's son, is not what he seems. Which I've always questioned that in the first place because I'm like, because all I remember is like, okay, one, she was a vampire at some point. Two, she came across him. I almost, I don't remember where he came in at, but I do remember like around the time we, we she first got him. Right. Uh, but so, and I think there was even then something kind of amiss with them, you know, mm-hmm. something not quite right, but they never really touched upon it that, that, you know, that, um, that heavily, they just be kind of basically alluded. This is like, oh, and the go, you know, whatever, whatever. And boom. Uh, so yeah. So but it is before we kind of found out that, yeah, there's, there seems to be a little bit more to, uh, well, I guess they not so baby show go at this point. Cause he's still really young. Right. He's toddler show go. Yeah, uh, that he uh, his uh, so they end up going to um, uh, Overworld uh, at the end of the book because they're they're trying to uh, get Captain Britain Brian Braddock, uh, you know, recover him before it gets too late, and they take uh, Jubilee decides to take Sugar with him, which you know may not have been the best idea, but hey, it, it, for story reasons, I'm sure there was a reason. Right, and, I think she was very much not into the idea of it was that, but yeah. apocalypse as the main babysitter, which I kind of don't blame her. No, but, I don't think we can. Yeah, so 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 I I her reasoning, but the fact that she went and got him in the first place, oh, well, I also understand that because like you know she didn't want to be too far away from him, and I get that part, but you know, so it, that part just ended up being one of them. But again, it was story reasons as to why it ended up happening the way the way it did, and. Mm-hmm. Like, we will, I assume, find out what's going on with Shoko. Right. Um, this was definitely a quirky, quirky second issue. This hmm. definitely threw a lot more wrenches into the system. And there might be, because there was another character, creature thing that um, may or may not be named uh, similarly as a web browser uh, that shows up during the course of this issue. And I'm kind of curious as that if that thing is going to play another bigger part or it's just going to be a part of the book going forward. And is that the new widget? And if anybody knows that the classic uh, Excalibur knows that there was uh, the, the classic team was rolling around with this little metallic thing that would right. get, w- that would basically be their portal uh, and, you know, other thing uh, called widget. I don't know if this thing is going to serve a purpose similar to that or that's just me. <laughs> that's just me wishing and hoping i don't know you mean but, the magic the magic fire thing yes oh okay i'm not sure yet so you could be right yeah like i said the, it shows up because you know the figure it's gonna show up and it's, that can't be just a just a one-off thing so mm-hmm. we'll see what happens with that but we got because we got other things to be dealing with at this point or it may even be tied to that in the next issue we don't know all right so we've gone through a lot of books but we still have a lot of books to cover so i think it's time to spin it up do it Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Apologies, I am <laughs> one monitor, so um, I was trying to get to my. So beautiful, though. That actually could have worked. And uh, I missed the button by like half an inch. Here we go. That's all good. Like I said, hey, you know what? That could have worked for me personally. That's just you know. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, let me cover a couple of books that I don't think you read. Um, Batman number 83. Right. Bruce finally confronts the spoiler alert. Uh, not so big a spoiler because this has happened. Some news has dropped about this. But uh, Bruce finally confronts the spoiler alert again. Death of Alfred Pennyworth. And is going to take it out over the last two issues of Tom King's run against uh, Thomas Wayne. Uh, All right. That actually happened, didn't it? Right, so we have two issues left of uh, Tom King's Batman. We shall see how this story wraps up. That's right, because that's the second Batman book this year that ha that has a death of Alfred. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Justice League number thirty-six. I did or, read. That. Oh, you did read this? Okay. So, I mean, in very quick, uh, in very quick uh, terms. The Legion of Doom may have overestimated their value to Perpetua. And what's that? I said that's saying it lightly. Right. And uh, the last gasp of the Justice League and the Hall of Justice is revealed. It's almost over. So the only thing I add to that is like, yeah, of course, Batman had a contingency plan and it had something to do with the Hall of Justice and a particular, I assume, a particular rock. That is, I guess, is now canon for. Because now that I look at the, if, if I go back to just watch the Super Friends, I can't not think of the, the 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 Hall of Justice being made out of the stuff and what it ends up happening to it in the uh, at the end of this book. Because at first I thought I was like, okay, is he going to turn into a transformer? Is that That's what I thought too? Like I was like, is he he's going to turn into a giant mech? And and of course, Batman would do some craziness like that to the Hall of Justice. Turns out, it not, wasn't that crazy, but it was crazy enough. It was close. Yes, no, it was definitely in. It was definitely in that line of thinking. Let's put it that way. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Next up, Arrow number five. I think Roddy Cat mentioned. Oh, hold on, hold on, go back a second. Okay. Um, I Just, need that question. Do you know anything about that car? The Flash car? Yes. Not sure. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. Re I didn't recognize off the top. I know. Of I recognize. I recognize that it's probably like an old seventies, eighties thing because that's usually when stuff like that would have would have happened. Mm -hmm. But still had me thinking, like, what the hell did the Flash need with a car? Right. When I saw that, I was like, okay. Right. But again, he also had the cosmic treadmill, so you you know take it for what it is. Anyway. All right. But the treadmill was more like the time machine. You know, like that's what he used to actually generate the ability to go back in time. So true. But still, the time travel. So yeah, you know. It's still weird, basically. My, my oh, point. That, that yeah, exactly. Weird. It's a mechanism for something, so yes. that was weird. Like the red bug in Power Rangers. <laughs> oh god! Anyway, Power Rangers. Talk, shout out to Toys That Made Us. Um, I got to catch up on that because I heard. Yeah, I don't know if you watched that, but uh, the Toys That Made Us uh, put out a new series. I heard uh, four yeah. episodes, a new season of four episodes this past weekend, and uh, one of the episodes was for Power Rangers. There, you're you're probably like the third, maybe fourth person that I know who, like, you know, know of that series and liked it. So, and I and I, who who was, uh, you know, told me that I should check it out. Knowing me, there's an excellent uh, as a quick aside. Uh, so much for rapid fire. There is an excellent um, episode covering uh, all of basically the history of the teenage mutant ninja turtles. Right in this in this part in this season of uh the show and it's excellent it is excellent excellent stuff yeah, it's heard not just about the toys. Seasons. right so yeah but yeah so if you're a tory fan you should go check that out right but if you're a turtles fan you should check it out well that too all right um getting back to rapid fire books arrow number five roddy cat did say he read this mm -hmm. i just very quickly had to say that the backup story is doing so much for both arrow and wave and i think it, there, there are now overt uh mentions of atlantis and i think th these characters are going to come up in um the atlantis attacks um cross mini crossover that's coming up Seems reasonable. Yeah, there's basically a, rev a revelation in during the course of that backup story. That's probably that's definitely going to come up somewhere else. If you know, and definitely kind of quote unquote to make waves in sure here. So, but yeah, yeah as far as the, the main story, um, yeah, it was just her kind of multitasking and trying to deal with um, actually it's multitasking on a couple of different fronts and doing various degrees of wellness about it, and then at the end. She gets asked a question, which not wasn't the question that I thought she was going to be asked, but the one that should have been asked. And I was happy that that happened 
whether she answers it or not, we'll see. Right. There's a personal, this personal stuff, stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just going to say that the primary story is still pretty slow moving, but it yeah. looks pretty. It's pretty nonetheless. That is true. Um, next up, I don't think we got to discuss Amazing Mary Jane number two in depth. No. But I would say that the series continues its commentary on the current status of the movie industry. It's interesting that Quentin Beck's portrayal as a tortured artist slash auteur is a somewhat logical development given his... Um, original special effects background and makes him a more sympathetic villain and obviously that's their intent the yes indeed i feel like especially with the help up over the jerker movie i feel like you couldn't tell me if like granted this was you know uh when this was done and when joker's kind of filming they kind of parallel so they may or may not have known it's like i feel like some of the stuff in the joker behind the scenes of the joker movie kind of could have gone this mm -hmm. way in a certain sense, but I doubt it because you know Hollywood is actually terrible in certain senses. Um, but that being said, I, I hope Mary Jane gets an executive producer credit because she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot in this. A lot, a lot. You know, but um, but it's been it's been all right. But yeah, it was like okay, she's basically just saving this whole thing. Like she, she don't get more credit from from whatever whatever. I mean, she is one. She, she in this story at least, she is not just one of those actors who is uh, reading lines and getting paid. She is actually in the business of creating, which is a good development for the character. Right, and she's basically like the you know, especially current and you know, with the last decade or two. I mean, she, granted, she's always been over. She's a solver, so it's just like, look, she sees a problem, she's gonna deal with it, and that's exactly what she's doing in here, to to effect. So, well, it's funny the what you were referring to is the solver, the solving part really used to mean how to get herself out of a superhero related mess. But now we actually get to see her, you know, like I said, the creative side of her acting career. Um, I don't think we've, we've really seen that ever from the character. And that is that's enlightening. And that is uh, very interesting. There, there probably were some allusions to it to some in some past books. Um, Right. My only experience was when oh, she was on the soap opera, you know, like during right. the uh, during the the, the late eighties uh, Spider Man. Right. So yeah, like there was hints of it, but just nothing to this extent. But I, I guess that could have fallen fed fed into this. Right. But, yeah. All right. Next up, Avengers number twenty six. I don't know if you read this. I did. All right. So the one million BC Avengers had a star brand, the second being on Earth to wield it, and uh, and a Hulk. If by you know. Kind of, yeah. And, and to quote an old French, yeah, teacher, right? To quote an old French teacher of mine, he was quite gay. Um, there is another interlude. This is another interlude featuring one of the members of the ancient Avengers team. Okay, hold on. But before you go any further, did you think? And maybe this is just me, though. So there's a, a pair of folks. One of them being who ends up being Starbrand, and another character who reminds me of a Star Spangled. Um, uh, Sentinel that we all know and love. I felt like they were going that route with it because it kind of felt like they just both rang up a, a Captain America and Bucky vibe to me. And there's been a lot of fanfic between them two anyway, so it would justify anything like that before it branched off into the, the Star Brand thing heavily. Oh no, I didn't. I I was about to say I didn't really get that, but I think it's because of Keown's art. I didn't really see um, the parallels between the two characters. I do, but that's just me. So, but I mean, I would say there's definitely some people. I now that you mention it, I'm just like, oh, okay, I see that. But it didn't come to my mind because I think um, the way Keon's art um, kind of depicted the characters, I, saw, you know, I've uh, what you call it. They kind of struck me as, and that, like I said, just because the, it's Keon's art, kind of mm -hmm. struck me as like kind of Hulk related characters. Well, <laughs> I think yeah, that's why, which, which which ended up being partially the case because of that star brand. Mm -hmm. you know, is a hulking figure definitely right so i think that's i think that's what kept me from seeing it in that way um i just saw them as um as hulk related characters because of keon's art um, yeah, uh, you know, from that saying. 90s from that 90s uh that 90s run that he had so right. and i definitely like the um the t-rex um Star brand t rex exactly i like that that was a really really cool depiction yeah, that was cool. 
Um, oh, and I would, and which if that makes so if for anybody keeping track. So yes, this is the one billion BC stuff that that as we've already said. However, this is basically also a blending of which they've already kind of done by bringing it into this universe. So basically, the the catalyst for the new universe, if you remember that um, um, uh, line of books back in the '90s, uh, has now partially become part of the um, how we get superpowered folks, or at least you know one small part of how we got superpowered folks on the Earth in this in the six one six. So the universe, the new universe, is basically you know the, the spark for some of that. Which is weird because that was his, his whole own separate thing. But then again, if you're dealing with multiverse, I'm sure there's a multiversal reason that somebody could gin up if if it ever came to pass. I doubt it ever will. I love the new, new universe, but that's just me. Okay. Uh, but the fact that they use it almost not necessarily in the Big Bang figure, but they they use it around that they kind of mention it around that time, or actually not around that time, but they kind of mention it after the time because we're still in the, you know one million BC, but. There's some parallels there, and the fact that they used that for this, you know, in relation to the stuff we already knew about what was going on on the Earth around that time, with in, in relation to superpowered beings, is is kind of interesting to me. All right, um, the last book I've got, because uh, we've already covered a lot of the books I read, uh, was is Captain America number sixteen. Uh, this issue this issue features Cap and one of the daughters of Liberty, Misty Knight, versus a U.S. agent, John Walker, that has not yet gotten over Hydra Cap. And, and uh, they are actually all on the trail of the latest version of Scourge. So, again, this is Coates um, putting his spin on the, uh, the mid-'80s run on Cap with, uh, by Mark Grunewald. Involving the original Scourge. Oh, which reminds me of uh, some news that I totally forgot to put in, I think. Um, that I saw. And um, hopefully I will get that by the time we get to that point. But since we are finished with that, I guess... Um, right, you can get to your books. You still got a few left. I've got a bunch left. And yeah, while I try to multitask, I'm going to try to... Pull that up real quick. There we go. Yay. Hoo hoo. Oh, wait. That's not. Oh, I don't want to use that. Correct. What is this? Um, uh, whatever. Oh, apparently, this is old news. You know what? Whatever. I, well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let me get to, to, um, to, to, to my books. Starting with uh, uh, Star Wars number 75. This is it, folks. The last issue of this volume. We know there's another volume coming that's going to be set place after um, after uh, Empire. I believe it's actually being, might take a, yeah, it's being taken place after Empire, excuse me, mm -hmm. as opposed to this going into Empire of the Strikes Back. Um, and yeah, the book ends nicely. Like it didn't. I think it was a a bigger size book than than normal, um, as it was kind of kind of wrapping up all the the, the stuff. Which at pretty much by last issue, everything was kind of coming together to where they were all going to be in the same place anyway, mm -hmm. and kind of brings that on in. And it felt like it just kind of wrapped up, kind of nice and neat. And you get to a place, and you know, they and that place was not necessarily Hoth, but they were they're. You know the the Sorak was called Destination or Hoth, so you see them getting to that point, but they didn't actually get there. However, we also find out there's going to be another one shot that's going to bridge this uh, volume and the next up volume um, that will probably deal a little more directly in that, and I think that's coming next month. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it was a pretty cool end uh, to to the end of the volume. I don't know if a couple of the people that has been introduced in the, this last arc is going to make um, any more appearances um, going forward. But being that the books are now still canon, I, I, well, I was going to say hashtag they are canon. Exactly. But so, but I don't know if they're just going to be rele relegated to you know here or whether they will show up in a cinematic form or some other form therein uh, going forward. So yeah, that's it. 
done. Uh, Loki number five. Speaking of another book that ended, apparently, um, Loki number five ended this week. Uh, as uh, an article we'll get to later says, stealth ended. Um, or oh, stealth canceled, I guess. So this was the last issue, and it looked like the, it was. I didn't. I'm not sure. Let's just say this book. Um, this issue in itself was um, alluding to some stuff that was going to happen going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently it's a shame we probably won't get, we may or may not get to see because of the fact that the book ended. Um, and this also brings up a, another new title for Loki. Um, Cause as we know, he's the God of story and the God of lies and all these other ones, but this is kind of him trying to, you know, put all that into perspective. And um, a friend of his from another uh, volume of a book comes into play in the middle of the book because that's who he ends up talking to. And I, this is a person I hadn't seen in a minute. So I was like, okay, cool. So, so hopefully, I assume that that person was probably going to be a part of the, uh, the story going into the whatever they were going to do next, which, again, we'll probably never get to see, which is kind of a shame because that book was actually not bad. And even in this book, he's basically in the Old West somehow. Um and uh, Wolverine shows up and, you know, shenanigans happened with that. And it's like, it was a pretty fun read, but you know, like said, that's, that's that. Um, Strike Force number three. So at the end of the last issue, um, there was a doppelganger of w Wiccan that was going to back to his house to, um, to, I guess, uh, kidnap a Hulkling. And I guess they were they, who was intercepted, and uh, the team, you know, was basically had to deal with Hulkling because uh, obviously when Wiccan got kidnapped, uh, you know, Hulkling would want to go along because that's his boo. But apparently they were like, no, we don't need you to do that because we already had, we're already dealing with shapeshifters. You know, having to have to deal with another shapeshifter while we're fighting shapeshifters is not not the move. So they deal with him. And apparently, Children's Crusade, if you know that event, um, is is um, is also well, is actually still canon. Of course, I've never really read it, but I knew kind of some of the beats about it, including the fact that Doctor Doom apparently married Scarlet Witch during the course of that thing, because I think he had her under some right. kind of some kind of control or whatever. And the Young Avengers at the time, which mm -hmm. Hulk, which was Wicklin was involved for in. Um, was around, and also in this book, because of um, the bad guys in this book thought they um, thought they kidnapped Doctor Doom, and come to apparently come to find out, which we alluded to earlier about um, you know some doppelganger speaking of happening. They they got the wrong Doom, hmm. so I'll just leave it at that. And um, and apparently uh, Angela's kind of alluding some stuff that we may or may not get to see. I don't know if it's in this book or elsewhere, but um, still still a cool uh, book. And they're still dealing with this face situation, so I don't know how long that's how much longer that's going to last. Um, let's see where are we now? It's kind of right, uh, da, da. Teen Titans number thirty six. So Lobo, uh, because of Lex Luthor, got control of Crush. Um, and I guess something to do with their DNA. So basically, he's controlling her and making her doing a couple of stuff. So he sends her after the Teen Titans, um, which you know goes the way you think it will. And apparently, uh, a big bad that gets alluded to that has been getting alluded to for like months, almost a good year now, um, rears their face at the end. We and it sounds like we may even get their identity because Robin was chasing after Robin and um Red Arrow was also chasing after this person, which weirdly enough didn't seem to have anything to do with what was initially going on within the last few months of this book. But like I said, just kind of popped up as saying hey, hey, they're looking looking for this person. But because of everything else that's been happening, it's kind of been shuffled to the wayside. But now it's back in play, and apparently Lobos was being contracted by this person. Yeah. Um, Titans, Burning Rage number four. This, so this whole thing was a seemingly old, a, a new slash old um, version of the Titans. So it's basically the, the classic folk, you know, um, uh, of the Teen Titans. 
but um, you know, well, let me phrase it: the the one we now know is classic minus uh, cyborg, and this is seems to be an adventure with them that looks to be set in the past, or at least the, uh, the art wise, it seems to be set in, in the, the past. But it's definitely a new story, a newish uh, type story. So you got you know Robin, Raven, Starfire, uh, Beast Boy, uh, you know, Sun Starfire. You know them, and the last couple of issues is them dealing with stuff and something with San San Francisco that happened that some of it is playing out here, but there's also um, in this issue particularly there's some talk with Beast Boy's step stepdad who was in Be uh, Doom Patrol, and that you know he may or may not be targeted by some folks, and then Hawk and Dove show up, and it seems like they may be under somebody's control, and there's a, a lot of mind control that's been going on in the last couple of issues. So, you know, I don't know if this is like a, a um, like this seems like just a, a side story that somebody just had on the back burner and may have uh, just finally got out, I think. I'm not sure. But it's it's all right. You know. uh, Superman's pal... Jimmy Olsen number five. I'm still enjoying this book. It's kind of fun. Uh, Jimmy Olsen in, in Gotham. Apparently, Superman takes uh, Jimmy Olsen to meet Batman for some strange reason. And of course, you know, impressions being what they were with Batman, or at least this version of Batman, because it's uh, Matt Fraction writing it. So there's a little bit of um, a little bit of pokey pokey fun at um, at things. And uh, Tim Olson being Tim Olson again because he still got that that alter ego, that quote unquote alter ego going on. And there's some other stuff like there's a lot going on in this book because apparently there's somebody that was after Jim Olson and he needed a um a body double and that got discovered. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of things going on in this book. And it's like we're pretty much in the halfway point after this issue of what's going on. Not even sure what is gonna what this book is trying to do. But again, it's a it's a pretty cool read. So, and if you like Fraction, I think you'll you'll probably enjoy it, especially with what he did on Hawkeye. I'm not going to sit here say that it's going to be the same level as that, but you can see some shades of that for sure. Um, <clears throat> and the final book I have is He Man and the Masters of the Multiverse, number one. The short and skinny of this is, um. There's an evil He-Man that apparently is going through the the multiverse, uh, stealing other versions of He-Man's uh, power sword and or powers therein. And it looks like there is a version of who will become Skeletor. They may um, that may have a uh, a a part in this. Maybe not as Skeletor. Um, Maybe quite possibly another version of human. We don't know. I, was, I I didn't honestly. I skimmed this issue, um, so I didn't get to read it to the end. But um, there are a bunches of references to some old human stuff, including the movie, because there is a couple of different things from the movie that that uh, show up early, and I'm like, okay, this is what kind of book this is going to be. But regardless, yeah, it's it's uh, a human book with. <laughs> multiversal he-mans and and crew abound so i'm quite interested in this and that folks as as agent 70 stares me down <laughs> no, i'm looking at my screen there's uh there's a an interesting uh side of from uh the use of this camera that uh viewers of the show may understand as i might be switching equipment uh for for two weeks from now so um that's that but i guess we're done with your book so we can get into clicks of the week mm -hmm. clicks of the week as i hunt on this monitor for the sound effect all right uh, we have one from one Tim D O G D nine eight, and that happens to be uh, he just wait actually <clears throat> let me make sure yeah yeah there were because there were two of the of uh, of those books that came out this week but he just went with the main line absolute carnage number five which I think is is that the last it is that's what I was referring to earlier as a big event book or a big event in uh in comics that has uh, pretty much wrapped at this point. So I think this is the last issue of the absolute carnage uh, mini 
Tiri, and there was a uh, side uh, side book that came out this week, which was an absolutely carnage uh, Captain Marvel, but I don't know right. whether you in it, he read it or not, who knows? Right, they've had several tie-in books to the series, uh, but with regards to the main series, I've been reading it here and there. It's not, you know, it, it, it it's it's okay for people who are at least mildly interested in uh, the Carnage and Venom storyline. It doesn't really, um, you know, uh, appeal to me, or, but I definitely understand. Sure. You know, if you're a fan of the character, that you would love this. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to try to sit down and, and and read through it, maybe over the holidays, and just see what what's been happening, just so I can get up to speed. Mm. So, you know, I, I understand that uh, they've definitely done a lot more exploration of the Eddie Brock character. So, you know, and they've expanded his uh, his personal universe um, with uh, family relations, apparently. So. Uh, you know, I, I look forward to trying to catch, catch up on that. That is Tim Dog 98's click of the week. Mine was pretty easy. I did have a few choices, but based on you know what I wanted to lead the show with, it's an easy choice. My put my click of the week is Immortal Hulk number 27. Shout out to Al Ewing and Joe Bennett. Indeed, indeed. Um well crumb bum. For myself, I am probably going to go. I really want to if I have, I haven't finished reading that He-Man book, I feel like that one's probably gonna be a, a front runner. But yeah. I can't rightfully do that because I didn't finish it. Um I can't test 429 was weird. Really, really weird. Uh, at the outset, so I think I am actually going to follow up Immortal Hulk, though, because um, that cause I read a lot and there was some good stuff in that batch. Um, but you know, if we're talking consistency, <laughs> well, I mean, if it stood out, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I'm this one's a, a consistently a standout book. It's going to be a, a Mortal Hulk pretty much almost every time. Um, so with that, I clicks are done. We didn't get one from um, Dirt. So we will go into the ad. First ad of the night. All right. Our first ad of the night is for Busted Tees. This episode of the Comic Book Chronicles is sponsored by Busted Tees. You're home for funny, awesome, cool t-shirts that are sure to get your friends' attention. Busted Tees puts many of their popular shirt designs on sale each week. Choose from several eye-catching t-shirts inspired by pop culture. There are cleverly themed t-shirts inspired by movies, video games, TV shows, comics, geek culture, etc., etc. They are all on sale. To help keep our podcasts free, order from Busted Tees by going to cspn.us. That's cspn.us. Then click on the Keep Our Podcasts Free link. Click on the Busted Tees banner and then four awesome t-shirts. Busted Tees through cspn.us. Do it today. Now, it's for the news. And we start off as we do every week with um <clears throat> excuse me the cinematic news sorry i'm trying to add something real quick um but as light stream there we go hey things working arrow showrunner says goodbye to the arrowcade cave yes that is what they kind of called it folks um <clears throat> So as Arrow comes closer and closer to his final episode, show, current showrunner ben Beth Schwartz has decided to bid fond farewell to Oliver Queen's headquarters, the Arrow Cave, as the series, as well as the series itself. Uh, she was on her personal Twitter account, and she uploaded a picture of herself on set, standing in front uh, and center of between the computers, while the stage lights shine above her and the, the Arrow Gauge. In the background, three members of the production staff can be seen, while Schwartz gives a big smile for the camera, and she captures saying goodbye arrow 
If you're watching the video, you can actually see the picture in question. Um, right. Yes, the Arrowverse loses its um, <laughs> its 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 namesake soon. So, right. Anyway, I'm next. Gonna call it after that. I mean, still, it's it's still the Arrowverse is even without the show itself being you know because it all stemmed from there. So, sure. but anyway. Next up, um, Ralph Dibney is a character on The Flash, and apparently the uh, the role of missing person uh, pretty, um, is destined to be solved now that they have cast the role of Sue Dearborn. Um, TV Line has uh, learned that Natalie Dreyfus, um, who's been on um, the CW's The Originals and CMT Still the King has been cast as the woman who, in DC Comics lore, eventually becomes the elongated man's missus. And you know what my response to that is? Who? And if it goes the way that the comics did, which I'm I hope uh, not. hoping not. <laughs> we don't want identity crisis to happen. Bad, 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 yeah. bad, 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 bad. Yeah, things don't end up good for that relationship. Bad stuff. But given the way the the the, the way the Arrowverse is, in in fact, um, hell, even a couple of people that are were involved with that event won't even be around there anymore anyway. So I don't think they're going. I mean, they could still spin it another way, but I don't think they're going to do that. Right. And they've been hitting a few, uh, a couple of like they did Flashpoint, and you know, most notably, and the, they you know, crossover stuff has been hitting stuff. But I don't, and plus, since given that their secret identities is not that quite secret, I don't know if that's gonna play. Read Identity Crisis, folk. Wait, it was it Identity? It was Identity Crisis, right? Where she, right? Was it was it Identity Crisis? Or am I or am I saying the wrong one? No, that's right. Okay, I want to make sure. Yeah, I was just trying to make sure because I felt like I've. Felt like I've read it. Um, maybe I need to read it again, but I, I felt like that's where that all went down. But yeah, things don't go go all that well in that thing if you, you know, if you know anything about that um, event. Anyway, Katie Cassidy's Crisis on Infinite Earths character isn't who you expect. Um, so yeah, apparently Earth One Laurel Lance uh, will be making her return in upcoming Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover. And she's been playing a few, a couple of different characters during the course of um, her time in that era first. So I can't imagine who it would be. I mean, notably, she has played Black Canary, as her namesake would, would suggest, and, and also another version of uh, Canary. So I don't know who this is. And um, apparently, Mike, Mike Guggenheim just kind of gives a hint <laughs> somewhat when someone asks on Twitter. It says Earth One Laurel in Crisis, Earth Two Laurel in Spinoff. Whatever that means. Okay. Yeah. Well, so we'll leave it at that until something rich. So somebody, I'm sure, already has that answer. Cool. Next. <laughs> uh, next up, um, one of Kingdom Come's most heinous events is has uh, is is. is confirmed to part of the crossover and that is the events that lead to the um the the creation of the kingdom come version of superman and that basically starts the road of the whole kingdom come um elseworld story right it's kind of like and, injustice but right. right and um it's hard to say spoiler alert for a story that is roughly 30 <laughs> years old uh, right. but, um, but basically, uh, Superman is unable to save, um, Lois Lane from an attack by the Joker again, cause like, mm -hmm. a just like injustice, but you know, way. Mm -hmm. way before. Yes. This is definitely way before the video game. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the thing. And if you know about King of Kong, which I don't think I've ever actually ever read, but I have, really? yeah, I'm fairly certain I haven't read it. Yeah, but I remember picking it up. I remember picking it up during a comicsology sale to read it, it, and I never have. Oh, I totally got it as it was coming out, and I think, I think I have one one of the copies uh, autographed by uh, by Alex Ross. I'm Wade. not sure. Oh. Come to think of it, I really need to get them signed by Wade as well. So. Mm, right. Um, so yeah, if you're watching the video, you can see some, uh, you can see the, a picture of Brandon Routh as, uh, I'm assuming Clark Kent, uh, I guess 
or maybe not. He might be playing himself. I don't know. It, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but you also see a picture of him as uh, King Jim Come Superman, and you also see um, looks like the the event in question in comic form. Right. So next up, Titans Image reveals official look at comics accurate Ravager costume. So that is the costume of one um, Rose Wilson, aka Deathstroke's daughter, who will be played by Chelsea Zhang. Um, and uh, if you're watching the video, you can see the picture in question or a picture in question. So, sure, I guess for a Titans budget, that's not bad, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's, it's again, this is for Titans, which is on fine. It's, it's comics fine. accurate, so yeah. So, but the you know the budget there is not you know. Oh. Yeah, it's not infinite. Exactly. So it is what it is. Cool. I mean, the Deathstroke costume was actually pretty good. So, I've actually heard the know. Deathstroke period was actually pretty good. On um, I haven't gotten there yet, but I heard the Deathstroke period was actually pretty good. Right. So it stands to the Ravager costume would be close. Would be close accurate. So, right. um, speaking of Titans, Jason Todd, the uh, the version of Robin that is on the Titans show, has a big seat, and the seat is. He's a big theater nerd. Oh, the inhumanity. Um, yeah. You know, what's funny, what's funny about this is that, uh, you know, shout out to um, uh, Brian Edward Hill, who uh, a guest on the show, we actually spoke to about being in the writer's room uh, for Titans. Um, I specifically asked him if he had, if he had read any of the old Wolfman Perez Titans. He was like, no. And I obviously understand after watching the show, um, I understand that that's, that is true. Um, <laughs> he's like the consulting writer on this. And I'm like, whoa, where is this going? Um, listen, it's G. It's very good. It is it's not the comic What What's that? I said it is a different take and definitely not meant to be comics accurate. That is for sure. Oh, it, is, it is definitely not. Um, but it is a slightly updated take. Um, some of the characters, at least to me, still don't ring true, but they definitely ring true as you know, it, with regards to how they have been developed thus far. So at least on the show. So, um, you know, that part is at least a little consistent, although there are some very weird twists on the show. I don't know if are you up to date on Titans? No, no. I mean I knew early on there was some they made some choices, but <laughs> but no, I am not. I mean they always they almost always have to, and that's the thing. We have to realize that that is the the essence of being an adaptation, right? right. So knowing that going in the choices that they make, whether or not they, 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 they conform to what your expectations might be, you know, it's, it, that's really never going to happen. But at the same time, if they make choices that feel right to the characters and the story, depending on the version of the characters that they're using, then, you know, it, it'll work. I'm mildly interested in maybe doing a treasury edition and maybe a solo show about um, this this uh, version of the Titans, you know, I, I might cover both seasons. We'll see as this season wraps up and we kind of get into a limbo status of um, the DC Universe app. So um, this is something that I'm going to throw out there into the universe. And if anyone, uh, shout out to Brian Edward Hill, wants to come on and talk about it, we'll see. Um, I'm sure he'd be down to at least discuss what has happened already and some of the choices that were made. So we'll see. We shall see indeed. Um, sure. All right. Do your thing. Uh, Joker 2. Yeah, is having... I was about to say, unless you catch up. And if you catch up, obviously, you know, you, um, you, uh, you can be uh, in on the show too. But uh, it all depends on when you catch up. Yeah, we'll see. Because, yeah, there's a, there's a lot out there right now. At this point. So... Hello, Mandalorian. Hello. Oh, yes. That was so good. This week. Anyway, we'll I was get about to say, that's, another, that's a treasury edition I think um, we could do. Shout out to Binge Mode. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Joker two is happening for some stupid reason. Um, yeah, because you know why, right? Well, DC sequel uh, with Joker. I mean, you know why, right? Phoenix, because it did some money. <laughs> I know, I know. It actually made. Really? Over, I didn't put it in the lineup, but it actually apparently made over a million. 
Yeah, it, a billion. Yeah, yeah, it hit the billion yeah. mark worldwide. Well, um, you know, and you can speculate as to why that happened, especially since it was a movie that not that many people initially wanted. And I didn't contribute my money to it, so I mean, well, you know, sometimes science has to be done. I, you know, wait, I thought you. Anyway, it doesn't. Do I it. did not. Yeah, okay. I did not. I thought I thought. I, was I okay. did not. Yeah, I did not contribute to it on the show. That, right. Yeah, you especially said that you were not looking to go out of your way to do such a nope. thing. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> and I still haven't seen it yet either. So it is what it. Well, you've seen it, but I haven't. But regardless, um. Yeah, so there's another one, and like I said, that made money, and uh, Joking Phoenix is in, is involved, and the people that are, like I said, you can make a case for the people that champion that movie in a lot of cases, and we won't mm-hmm. there on this particular night. Right. Um, all right, next up, uh, speaking of what I was just speaking about, mm-hmm. uh, the set episode of The Mandalorian confirmed what we suspected about the quote unquote asset. I do not want to spoil this. I know it's been out for a week. Uh, but yeah, there is a big reveal at the end of the first episode. And yeah, so, we. Were. So here's the problem with that because people have been well, spoiling it night one. Night when the, when the, well, because, I mean, even if you saw the first, the first episode and got to the end of it and saw that like no even then people were spoiling and i'm like y'all need to calm down yep absolutely because there were a whole bunch of like pictures and this and that and other of of the, the of the major spoiler of that and then going into this uh episode like people mm-hmm. like y- y'all need to calm down because not everybody gets to just do that you know just to see it that being said i yeah. i was kind of spoiled but at the same time i was i was all in anyway so right i mean i saw it uh, uh, upon you know, I saw it quickly on release, so I did not get spoiled. Right. So, but you know, it, unfortunately, in this day and age, you have to exercise a little bit of um, internet savvy. Where you, if there's something that you do want to catch up on, that you do want to watch, um, you just have to stay off of so, so like most of your social media. So. So while I agree, I don't agree because there's reasons why I'm on social media in the first place that has nothing to do with that. And like generally, yes, I absolutely agree with you on that. But also at mm-hmm. the same time, no. Oh yeah, people should spoil, of course. Exactly, and that you know, your people are you know are not looking. The people come on social media for different reasons, and that one reason is not to be instantly spoiled day one for a thing. So people have to right. You know, show some restraint. So you shouldn't. It shouldn't be. Well, you just don't. You don't go on the internet when something's happening. That's just the wrong answer. Um, well, I mean, it's kind of a protocol. <laughs> it, you know? it, it is a thing to do. Yeah, but at the same time, like I said, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to be the one to. You shouldn't have to, right? Because right, some shouldn't people can't. To. Some people can't. Um, you know, exercise restraint. control themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, but that being said, it was a good issue. I mean, it was a good episode, and uh, um. Yeah, it was um, amusing in spots, and yeah, we got we definitely got to know a little bit more about what we still don't necessarily know some actual factuals about this um, this creature thing that that shows up outside of what we that was already been revealed and who it's being referred to, mm-hmm. and even people out there being you know corrected up saying you know who they think it actually is when it can't possibly be. Or could it? We don't know. But you know, because there is also some some alternate theories as about you know some things that show up during the course that you know it could be this or that, and it could be a version of that person who would not be around at this point. But, it sounds like we're quoting Black Sheep, but anyway, you know, right? Um, <laughs> but but the second time of this show, the second time this episode, you've done it, and I kept thinking about it. Um, I did for the first time, so you 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 got me on that one. What's that? I said this is, I don't I I don't remember actually you know I, I don't remember being when you, it, when you go back through it you'll be like oh my gosh it is the second time I've used it tonight. Yeah. Um but uh but anyway uh all right so yeah, it, was, you, it was it was a good episode and yeah and granted I some would argue that actually I shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. If you're watching the video you you know and you probably not you may you know, you may have seen some pictures that may or may not spoil it, but if you've seen the show by now, you've already seen those images. Mm-hmm. But they 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 tell some things. Absolutely. Let's just say. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so continue to, to enjoy it, and um, we still have another six hours to go. And I'm going to lose because I, to. yes, I'm definitely looking forward because I think they come out every Friday, correct? If I, I think we, if we so. did the schedule, yeah, and it'll come out like every Friday because that people were kind of like, well, wait a minute, it just came out with the service, and then like the uh, a couple of days later, it came the next episode came out, which is the probably the regular schedule. So mm-hmm. it so happened to be that the, the service dropped a few days before the the next episode did. So anyway. If you're a Star Wars fan, or even if you're not, you know, you don't necessarily have to be to to get some enjoyment out of this. Um, I I would dare say the way it's set up, you really don't have to be. But if you're a fan of, you know, there it definitely does ring. There are some allusions to other like older. Um, I mean, which granted, Star Wars in itself is like that. So there are some movies that looks like um this episode was, or at least one or two um um movies or movie series. Uh, that this kind of takes some notes from, let's just say. Mm-hmm. Um, one of which I think is, a, I would dare say, is a favorite of um, uh, Agent 70s and mine. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, that, shout out to Ogan Peter. Word. Um, so, but anyway, let's move on. You got next. All right, that's me. Um, Disney Plus has Gargoyles episodes uncensored for the first time in decades. Oh, so, it's on my watch list. It is also on mine. Um, so apparently these, yeah, these versions have been available since the original physical release, and I, I guess they were edited at the time, or they were probably edited when they got on TV because of uh, Gargoyles. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you don't need to tell me this. This was a darker show for a you know a Disney show, and some things happened. There was like some gun usage and. Like people got so some things happen. I should actually, and I'm not a person who actually watched all the way through, so I can't really speak directly on what happened. But I've heard some things, right? Uh, so therefore, so apparently, unlike the other things that are getting edited and not edited on that service, um, this is one that is uh not being censored for once. So, yay! And then. You got the, it. And then this article kind of goes into what else they will people want to see. I actually heard Weekenders, uh, which is a favorite show of mine, is coming onto the service at some point. So that's good news because Recess is already there, which is basically the, the other parallel to it. And I would love to see Fillmore because I never got to see that show, but apparently at some point that's coming. Mm-hmm. But in other Disney Plus news, I was about to say in our next in our next story, Disney Plus is actually streaming X Men the animated series in some portion out of order. So according, it's kind of funny given, given what we said last week about Clone Wars, Clone Wars, right? It's kind of funny that they didn't put that out of order, or at least in the proper viewing order. Uh, right? They put that. They kept that in release order. And what's funny about this is that. Apparently, seasons one and two and half of three are all listed in the correct order. Everything else is a big mess. So that must be quite a hassle for anyone catching, trying to catch up on their X-Men the Animated Series. Right. Um, and I know I do follow the 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 um the, the that uh, the account, the X-Men writers. X Men TS writers room, and I don't know if they mentioned anything about this or not, but you know, I know there are people talking about it. You know, although there's also been people who just like to get seen and were like, "Hey, X, this was just so they can get retweeted by whatever." But that's a whole other internet thing that we, you know, <laughs> that has nothing to do with this article. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's and I don't think it even says why that happened. I don't think there's um you know while the original air date order does not entirely make sense with the continuity of the series uh white notes the uh, the person who brought this up i guess notes that the disney plus lineup also does match the script order instead it is uh an entirely new layout so it doesn't go in script order it doesn't go in release order it just goes in it has a that's weird why would i think that? somebody messed up some coding right there i wonder yeah, I don't know. I guess we we may ever never find out. But if we do, I I would be curious to hear that story. Uh, so anyway, another Disney Plus news. Uh, Sophia DiMartino in talks for Loki co-starring role. Uh, uh wait, hold on. Well, you know what? You know what this is. <laughs> Who? So DiMartino was last seen in the film yesterday. 
Okay. I'm assuming that's a Beatles movie. I don't I don't even know. Um it's, yeah, it's, I was about to say the, the premise is that the world has forgotten who the Beatles are. Right. And I'm like, okay. Right. Which wait, doesn't uh didn't um I feel like somebody who's been on the show has under no, I'm thinking of the fifth Beatle. That's not that's not yeah, that's that's different. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I thought that person had something to do with this, but I don't think so. <laughs> Either way, uh, but shares a connection with Loki star Tom Hiddleston in that they both appeared on the BBC One hospital drama Casualty, albeit two years apart. So, okay. I mean, it's just like Drake from Degrassi and someone else from Degrassi, and that's nothing. Never mind. Don't even <laughs> let that even keep going. I don't know why I let that fool's name out of my mouth. But anyway, you know, so yeah, there's no... Um, who knows? Well, all it says here is that the actor beat out several other actors in what Hollywood trade calls a highly contested part. So I don't know what this who this person is going to be. The, I, at first, I was thinking, okay, uh, is it going to be female Loki? Yeah, that's that's. I was about to say that. There's probably a lot of speculation about that being. Mm-hmm. And outside of that, I couldn't tell you who this person is. Maybe it's very the Willis, like I almost alluded to earlier, but I doubt it. I mean, maybe they recast Lorelai, you know, who's supposed to, you know, who was on Agents of Shield. There we go. Uh, that that character has some history with Loki, but uh, you know, in the comics and the Simonson run. So, but um, but maybe yeah. Say again. Maybe it's Angela. I doubt it, but I yeah, that's unlikely. But uh, you never know. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Moving right along. Next up, uh, the Hawkeye opening title sequence has been revealed from the Disney Plus series. So, w- was this in the trailer in that uh, that um, that documentary? That is, I still have yet seen that that documentary. So, I don't. Know. I did see that. So, I'm wondering if what <clears throat> I was the was the uh, title sequence. It might have been. I don't know. Uh, so, if you're looking you at sit down with that, man, it's not that long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like uh, I mean, you know, title sequences. I don't you just miss the the old title sequences where it just had a, a song and you know the, the I, I missed the old way the the because they actually had they, theme. They in, yeah, it was like when they put an effort in making a theme song. Yeah, exactly. Now it's just like a thirty seconds, almost like a thirty second stinger, and with the with the name of the show or whatever kissed me. So it's like, all right, well, that's that's this is where we are. But uh, I don't know. This doesn't seem like any. I'm skimming this article. It doesn't see where it's either from that thing. It's probably everything else was. I might as well say mm-hmm. it was from that thing. Uh, but yeah, there's a thing. Report. Uh, Miss Marvel audition video teases introduction of new Avengers team. Ooh, hold on. We have a. We do have a sound effect for this. It should be um, appropriate. Um, I'm looking for it because it all looks very different. Uh, in a leaked audition tape, the actor auditioning for the role of Kamala Khan, if you're watching the video, you can see a, 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 a picture of her, uh, aka Ms. Marvel, seems to be discussing her character's origin with Captain Marvel, while also dropping a subtle hint at the ex- existence of the new adventures. Uh, quote unquote, Captain. I was just watching the new Avengers train all afternoon. She says, I mean, they're just incredible, the most amazing people I've seen. That sounds like some Kamala would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then, uh, there's a little bit more to it. We don't have to get into it. So, that's interesting news. So, Kamala gets her own show, but also will possibly be introducing the new Avengers, who of whom she was, well, I guess, depending on what person it is she was not a part of right she was definitely on a new version of avengers but exactly all right yeah we will probably never get that version with her and miles and and nova not with uh not with the spidey rights yeah no and that's sad Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but nevertheless um hey you know what Good luck to who all that's all losing it. And if I, I don't know if this per- is this is the person that is getting it. Hey, more power to her and anybody else. Um, got it. Next, next up, Hulu's Runaways is ending with season three, which is not surprising news. This was the last Marvel no. TV show that was non Kevin Feige. Uh, and given the fact that we already got news, I think a week or so ago that um, Cloak and Dagger got canceled, which right. was also from Hulu, so. Well, no, Cloak and Dagger was on Freeform. No, but it was also on Hulu also. 
Oh, but yeah, it was showing on Hulu, correct? Yeah. But it was uh, it initially, I believe, started on Freeform. So, um, mm-hmm. right. So uh, the show is going to end with the upcoming third season. Marvel made the announcement alongside the release of the official Runaways season three trailer. Um, apparently, it is worth noting that Runaways, as opposed to Cloak and Dagger, is actually being shown on Disney Plus. Yeah, so I'll put that on there. I think the the because I saw Runaways on there. So the first season is on there. Uh, I don't know if the second season is because I think I'm guessing. Well, no, because they're in the third season now. I don't know. I, I put, but it's in my watch list. I'll check it. But they don't have Cloak and Dagger. Or at least it did the last I checked, which was like a couple of days ago. Right. I mean, my hope is that they add it eventually. I assume they will since they got Runaways on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I sincerely uh, hope they do add it. Yeah. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't add it. That's the, you know. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know that. I mean, now that you know that, and if you haven't seen Runaways, and that basically, as I said, um, gives me less reason to keep Hulu because that was the only other reason why I had it or was going to have it. Hey, I, I was about to say I had a weird binge of ER episodes earlier this week. So yeah, that happens. It's just a weird thing. I was like, wait, I can watch this on Hulu. I was watching for some stupid reason, uh, hanging with Mr. Cooper. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. And also, and I think, uh, well, we were talking about one time Gumball, and I've always kind of been in that a little bit, you know, because Gumball's great and crazy. Okay. <laughs> you never watched Gumball? I'm sorry, say again? Have you never watched Gumball? Gumball. Yes. So it is an animated series, and it, and it plays with a lot of different animated styles, including CG and whatnot, that you should check it out. It's, it's okay. crazy. It's good. And you have, you have Hulu, I assume, still. So, yeah, check that out. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Right. Um, yeah, it's about this little kid named Gumball and his family and hijinks. You know, he's kind of a, almost like a Dennis the Menace type, type character, and all kind of craziness just happens in the course right. of the season. So, yeah, I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. But, yeah. uh, guess what? What's up? Much next. <laughs> uh, Disney says release dates for five untitled Marvel movies. According to Hollywood Reporter, those dates are October. Uh, 7th, 2022, February 17th, 2023, May 5th, 2023, July 28th, 2023, and uh, November the 3rd, 2023. So, yes, if you're keeping score, there's like one movie in 2022 and four movies in 2022. We have had at upwards of three in a year. So, that's not outside of Ramadan, but that fourth movie is like, wow, what the hell? I'm assuming. Wait, I'm going to assume one of those is Spidey. Yeah, there's got to be. There's got to be something that was kind of shoehorned in. And I want to say that maybe that May one uh, is either that May one or that July one because I think that date might have possibly have come out already mm-hmm. or something. I mean, at the end of the day, um, we bow to our Disney movie overlords, <laughs> um, right? Because for God's sake, man. <laughs> They're right. actually planned out to 2023. Actually, I think it's longer than that. They just don't know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the distinguished competition can barely get a Black Adam movie out. Barely. No. There are people still talking about that stupid uh, cinder cut. Uh, that barely, was funny... They're barely getting a Black Adam movie out. Barely. Yeah, well, yeah, that's still happening though, uh, apparently, or something. Ain't no telling, the, but that's they keep talking about that. Yeah, story. I was about to say, isn't it, it's got to be in the news this week. Uh, I, there was something I don't know if I put it in there, but um, right. regardless, anyway. So, but you don't know the, the we do know Guardians, Captain America, Ant Man three, uh, Captain mm-hmm. Marvel two, and Blade are in the runnings. Uh, it says here it's possible one of more of these films may see the introduction to Fantastic Four X Men. I doubt that, but sure. <laughs> Keep up alive, I guess. Um, next up. All right. Um, Marvel confirms Thanos had two different nicknames in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. So uh, neither of them was a mad titan. So apparently, internally, uh, Thanos was nicknamed the Philosopher in Infinity War. And um, Endgame apparently had, an, uh, well, he was named a Warrior Thanos. You would think there would have been the other way around, though. I mean, granted, he was spitting a lot of philosophy during the Infinity War, true, but I figured because it's, it, it you know, and granted, he wasn't in, well, yeah, he was. I was going to say, in, in game, he was kind of like, look, <laughs> this mm-hmm. is what it is. But there was definitely, I see why, because, yeah, there was definitely more. I mean, granted, he was fighting in both of them, 
but you can definitely see why I guess of why they called them that in, in game. I guess. Sure, that's a thing that happened. Um, why Iron Man had to die, not retire, and Captain America had to live because Hollywood. That's the way Hollywood does things. Mm-hmm. That was me paraphrasing. Uh, apparently, it's the writers of um, um, of in game. Yeah, they're still basking in the glory, by the way. Yeah, they're, they're never stopped talking. They actually, I'll take that back. They did for a minute. Um, because it was like, yeah, they were just talking way too much. Like, granted, well, yeah, upon release, but then upon release of the blue, no, no, no. I'm talking about like up until like probably a couple of months ago, like it, there was always something like, yeah, this is could have been this and this could have been oh, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. But like upon release and then upon home release, that's sure. what really started. You know, oh, obviously, right, right. people could watch. You know, watch it at home and kind of dissect things according to what they're hearing from uh, Marcus and McFeely. Sure, and I'm sure whatever what's on the um, the um, does anybody actually um listen to the commentary tracks anymore? I do once in a while, and mm-hmm. I've, I've I've actually I've actually gone back and listened to some movies that have them, some older ones that I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it does. It, it part of it is just time. You know, if you have the time to listen to it. Um, I, I've tried to listen to a few, so count me among, uh, those who try to listen to the audio or director commentary. Sometimes I have known, I knew somebody back in the day who would rip out the commentary and just, like listen to it as a podcast, mm-hmm. which I'm like, that's an interesting way to do it. That's still, it is. Fun, but it is, it's kind of awkward because you can't actually see sometimes if they've got a visual cue, but Hey, that happens in our podcast too. Well, there is that. Well, yeah, and but a lot of times, I mean, let's face it. Even when they had the visual cues, sometimes or the, the the people doing the commentary don't necessarily. <laughs> they're they're sometimes they're like, "Look, this happened." I'm like, "Okay, I don't," I mean, you know, or they don't even talk about what's happening on the screen half the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it could go either way. So, but basically, yeah, there was a reason why why Tony had to die. I still think I feel like it and without even reading this article, uh, I, I feel like it, it was like, well, clearly he didn't want to be in, in the movies anymore. So they killed him just like they do people on TV who want to leave and do other projects and then leave the Captain America one open because he, you know, while he, you know, would probably do less of them, you know, they could still keep him open. Again, that was my speculation. That's probably nowhere near the truth. That you know, but there's a reasoning. It's in this article, and I won't go in through it. Right, you can um, when you read it. Next, all right. And next up, Dolph Lundgren finally put the Punisher skull on for a photo shoot for a podcast called the Launchpad Podcast. Not so to be confused did, with Launchpad McQuack. Exactly. What they did was recreate the classic Amazing Spider-Man number one hundred twenty-nine cover, and um uh which we'll call it and uh there's another co- there's another cover too it's not here in our summary but i did see it um uh, it's really just dolph lundgren wearing a punisher t-shirt i would have loved to see him wearing like a long sleeve shirt um uh, oh, some, some, yeah some form of the the gear exactly but it was just a punisher t-shirt you know but it yeah, was, it was like, a classic right it was the classic skull, so that does count because obviously in the first movie that I have not watched because when I heard he doesn't wear the skull, I was like, nope. I still have not watched either any of those uh, Punisher movies, and I think I have at least one of them on Netflix on deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, that is something I said I was going to do at some point. I got you. I got you. All right. Um, but yeah, so that you can if you're watching the video, you can see the picture of uh, – the said picture of the podcast uh, art album art in question and the uh, reference material. Right, first appearance of the Punisher. Exactly. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy's Palm Clementif has joined the Mission Impossible Seven and Eight. And as I said on Twitter, I hope they treat her better than they did or than Guardians did Mantis. Because that's just a travesty. Yeah. Yeah, just um, comic relief. Well, yeah, basically, and that, and that is far from how the character was mm-hmm. in the comics. So, um, very lovely girl. Anyway, but um, so let's see what it says here. Yes, joined to the cast of the two upcoming Mission Impossible movies, which I, I enjoy those movies. They're fun. Seven and eight, because apparently they got like a good. They're basically like Fast and Furious at this point, mm-hmm. and they're turning out of these jobbies. Thanks, um, Cruz and Macquarie. Um, 
the casting was revealed in two Instagram posts, one by writer and director Christopher McCrory. That name should sound sounds familiar to you. Then you know where it's from. Uh, then by one by the actress herself. Um, okay. Post, uh, featured a photo of Clementine. Then said, um, "How do you say femme fatale in French?" Mi seven eight hashtag. And the 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 actress reposted and added mischief accepted. Hashtag Mi seven eight. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Oh, apparently Haley Atwell will be in Gregson Santa. I don't know who that last person is. Is going to be in um, one of the movies or both of them, I guess. Along with returning Tom Cruise running his butt off and Rebecca Ferguson. So I guess she's like Rebecca Ferguson is part of the one um, outside of like Simon Pegg and uh, Ving Rhames, who's been there because they used to rotate the women out in those first few. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she's been in the last couple of them, and I still haven't seen six yet. It's on Amazon. Let me phrase that. I still haven't seen it in full. I, I mean, I already have it, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just um, but I haven't seen it in full. Like I got up to the, um, the, where Cavill comes up. I gotcha. Yeah. It's on Amazon though. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, good, good on her for that. Hold on. Like I said earlier. Yeah. All Next right. up, uh, Legendary Television has signed a deal to produce a TV series based on Frank Miller's Sin City, and uh, Frank Miller is going to produce it, and they're going to bring in director Robert Rodriguez, who helmed the Sin City film back in 2005. Hmm. Um, as a producer. Right. Uh, oh, so they're going to bring him in as a, as a co-producer. Right. So... Um, there was previously a deal struck to bring Sin City to TV with The Walking Dead showrunner Glenn Mazzara. I was gonna that never happened, right? So, you know, there's still no timetable for the show's release. Well, yeah, I mean, might as well strike while the iron is still lukewarm because you know, there's always interest for Sin City, though. So, yeah, sure, what was good, or one of them was good. I don't think I've seen people, people, people like that. Back <clears throat> series so you know people sure. to, i was gonna say people get redirected to that series a lot in comic book stores so sure which mm, there's that's a lot about the people in the comic book stores then i'm not saying the series is good because i don't i mean not good but i'm you know but sure okay uh bloodshot director reveals how ving rain ving, ving rain excuse me vin diesel's nine-year-old son and jeff lemire inspired the film so in um you know this is an article with uh, Newsarama and the director um what is his name uh, Dave Wilson it's right there blind um who is the director of Bloodshot and it's a excuse me article of him about that so you can go check that out at your leisure in next. Uh, so we've got some first look photos for Netflix's uh, animated Fast and Furious uh, series. Um, it's going to come out on December 26th. So Merry Christmas to fans who are at least a little curious to see what they do with this. It's a spinoff that will star. Um, it's backed by Vin Diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, several of the uh, producers of the uh, Fast and Furious movies, and it's going to star cousin of Dom Toretto, Tony Toretto. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious! And we had, um, we had uh, you and I had uh, kind of mentioned this on when the when that news came out because I sent this to you on Twitter. We talked about it, and, and I was like, "Well, watch is somehow, some way, be in canon with the movies." Well. I doubt it, but I'm just saying that, like that, that probably would refer to something. To do. Right, they'll refer to something. They probably won't interact or roll into one another, but they'll refer. I don't know. I don't know. Given, given, uh, what should we call it? Given Vin Diesel's kind of uh, connection to continuity, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, real uh, connection to that, you know, to that sense of continuity between the films. Right, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Kat, shout out to Martian Gat, was like they could bring Brian back, which I know she's a, a, a fan of Paul Walkers and what else, but I'm like, yeah, they could, but why? Leave the character be. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just like, why, period. Huh? Yeah, exactly, I'm kind of like that. Leave the character be. But regardless, I mean, I, I don't think it's going that far with it. Like, this is basically spinoff slash sides, or I don't, like I said, that whole mm -hmm. 
thing I said initially about them it being canon possible, but I kind of and I kind of doubt it also. Um, so regardless, hey, that's the thing. Now, if Netflix was smart, and hopefully they would get the rest of the Fast and Furious movies so people can binge watch them Jokers all together. <laughs> which I don't know if that's on on them or you know whatever. Because I know they, had, I think they had a couple. Yeah, they definitely have had a few. Yeah. So regardless, um, yeah. Next up, but they're also on FX a lot, so well, if you yeah. happen to get that channel. Yeah, if you, yeah, exactly. If if you happen to get that channel, mm-hmm. um, because I could talk about my crappy internet. I mean, my crappy um cable service package, right? Next up, anyway, next up, um, Avatar: The Last Airbender gets a complete steel case, steel book run. Um, Jesus Christ, I hate. Um, Hold on a second, sorry. Because uh, apparently it's saying I got ad blocker on. I really don't. Or at least for that for that stupid site. Um yes, Avatar Last Bender gets complete series steel book for 15th uh anniversary. Oh. Okay. Uh it's incredible thing that Avatar Last Bender is about to celebrate its 15th year. Yep, yep. And uh, to reinvigorate, fa- reinvigorate fans of the claimed animated fantasy series, and you should very much check it out if you're a fan because it's a good. Um, uh, have announced a new limited edition steelbook collection for the three season series. I'm going to assume it's going to be on Blu ray because I can't imagine it not, right? Um, but regardless, the, the 15th anniversary limited edition steelbook collection will be available February 18th, 2020 from Paranop and Nickelodeon for good gosh, 97.99. I'm sure that <laughs> price will go down some point later. And yes, it is Blu-ray because it says on this picture. <clears throat> I don't have that one. I do have Cora. I'm tempt it but at the same time there surely is another version that is on blu-ray that i can probably find for cheaper okay yeah, obviously it's gonna have a lot of it's gonna have some commentary because it's an anniversary edition but uh, my pockets all right there. understood uh just as a quick aside i happened to walk through a local best buy in brooklyn and um walking down the 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 blu-ray slash dvd aisles i saw a dvd set unfortunately i did not see the corresponding blu-ray set of the complete voltron both lion and a vehicle shows i kind of started chuckling i was like oh man i gotta look this up next time so is it in a special case or just like just a a special case it was it was a set huh interesting yeah, so I was, you know, oh, it was it wasn't like the old transformer set was like looked like the uh, Matrix and leadership, or was it just like what you just answered that? So okay, no, it was just too. You know, it was just a it was just a, a a you know like a small you know set of DVDs that had both okay. versions. So it was okay. really interesting. Yeah, nothing nothing gift wrapped with you know like no gift case or whatever, but a uh, special case. But yeah. uh, I thought it was pretty entertaining to see. Mm-hmm. I will be at least some at some point just perusing. For uh, uh, Amazon, to see if that exists so right in Blu ray form. Um, next up, uh, for fans of Michael Moorcock's epic fantasy horror prose franchise, Elric, the novels, there's like nine novels, um, mm. is being developed for television by former Walking Dead showrunner Glenn Mazzara. You know, he, we were just talking about this dude, and TV writer Vaughn Wilmot. So this was first reported by Deadline. They are working on. They are working with New Republic Pictures, who purchased the Elric rights. So mm-hmm. this is. I've heard of this, which is funny. I know that they did some. They did try to make some comics of this. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. And uh, my understanding is that this is kind of like one of those middle of the road popular, you know, in terms of popularity series. It's not. Sure. It's not Conan, but it's like as a almost cult, like a uh, cult uh, right. in the 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 you know in, yeah. in, 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 following, right? Well, yes, that's okay. it. cool. Yeah, I've never heard of it before, and I was about and I was going to say not to be confused with the Elric brothers um, of of Full Metal Alchemist fame, but that, that joke did not need to be said, right? So cool. That, folks, uh, is the end of the cinematic news. Uh, I will take the time to say that before we transition into the comic book news that 
Solicitations for February 2020 are coming out. We have DCs and a few other people, so a couple of bits of news will probably be coming out of that. All righty. So, so mm-hmm. let's transition. I am still enjoying watching those old Spider-Man and his amazing friends on Disney+. Uh, almost uh, there was the one Doctor Doom one, or actually I think there was a couple of Doctor. There's Doom. a couple of them, yeah. You know, but there was one in particular that I was gonna um, uh, go back and watch. But I feel like uh, you know what? If I'm doing this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And obviously, you got to watch Seven Little Superheroes. That's oh, I watched it. It was funny. Yes, yes. I'm like Shanna the She Devil, really. Yeah, exactly. Like that was a, like I wonder who made up that that the that weird. So who made her the token woman, right? And I was like, come on, you. Well, I thought of Firestar. Well, I guess yeah. Well, exactly. Well, even just them together, like okay, like if they had put the rest of the invaders in there, I could see like exactly. Okay, you know, Doctor Strange. Uh, well, excuse me, um, Defenders. But like, right. they, had, they, they, they could have done invaders if they had Cap and uh, Namor. You know. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, or if they had like you know, brought, somehow brought back uh, the rest of them or, or whatever it gets me. But it's like, yeah, they, I can see them going a couple of different places with this, but they just like like just pull some names out of the hat and like, all right, we'll just throw them into this. It is always funny. There was a um, speaking of, there is um, on Twitter. I think Marvel Entertainment put out. Um, I think there's a list of, as it says, Spider Man's amazing friends. And it's basically like, you know, uh, other characters have been on the show. I think there was a, a shot of like Tony Starks. There was Matt Murdock, uh, and, you know, uh, and the Hulk. And I think there was a list of a couple of other people that might be on the site that I meant to pull. And there was that. So I'm sitting here like, sure, just go to Seven Little History uh, Superheroes. You know, it's all, it's, it's all there. It's sure. All Anyway, uh, comic book news. Superman reveals watching Spider-Man and the Phrase. Did you ever get around to uh, watching Spider-Woman? No, it's on my list. Okay. That's what I get for watching, uh, for 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 uh, accidentally binge-watching ER this week. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that was a good show, so. Mm-hmm. Um, anywho, Superman reveals his secret identity to Jimmy Olsen in the first look. So apparently, Bendis is really serious about this, this whole... Um, uh, Superman reveal thing, which apparently so I saw something on internet. It's on on Twitter. Somebody said like this is the second time in two years that uh, Superman has revealed his identity. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember. We should know. Well, you would think. Well, I think. Well, the people who we know who are more who read more DC than both of us do are not on the show, right? So I'm sure they would know, and probably listen to this be like, "No, you idiots! Yeah, this is gotta get a good about it." I mean, they wouldn't call us idiots, I hope, but still. Shout out to Dirt. What up? Anyway, regardless, um, yeah, in Superman 18, he's going to reveal his secret identity. And apparently, yeah, that's going to be a thing that's happening. You know, this is not the first time Bendis has done such a thing. <laughs> right. So, sure. All righty. Next up, uh, speaking of uh, Brian Michael Bendis, his relaunch of Young Justice as part of the Wonder Comics publishing imprint has revived lots of forgotten parts of the DC universe. And the next one that's going to be explored uh, in the coming year is Scartaris, where which is the home of the mythical hero Warlord. With I wouldn't say that's not fair. Big white beard. Right. I wouldn't say that's kind of not fair because they they were not necessarily forgotten because Warlord has come up a couple of different times and more specifically in Trinity. Oh, okay. like that was a couple of years ago, and that's just me. So I'm just not, not a whole lot of people read that book, <laughs> apparently. But yeah, so yes, Guitarist is going to be a thing they're going to go to. Which you know what? Hey, as long as they're still on this um, multiversal, or and or you know as they're on this traveling thing, sure they can do that. Sure. You know, but yeah, definitely uh, Warlord and Skatars has come up in in recent years. So it's not like it's just coming out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Next up, <clears throat> Deceased, it returns with the Unkillables. So apparently that uh, the Deceased train will just won't stop. <laughs> I mean, don't get me hey, able to go serious. If you're, you know, I, as a person who's not crazy about a whole lot of zombie stuff, uh, specifically, well, definitely the Marvel stuff, the Marvel zombies I wasn't crazy about, but just in general, mm-hmm. um, Deceased was pretty good. Uh, Tom Taylor wrote that, who also wrote, um, you know, Injustice and some other stuff. 
so it was a good read. I, I would definitely say, hey, you should check that out if you're so inclined. But anyway, in this case, there's going to be a three-issue Deceased uh, Unkillables Monthly that shows that while the heroes were tied up in the main Deceased series, uh, the Deceased villains, led by Red Hood and Deathstroke, had their hands full of themselves with uh, the apocalypse scenario. Mind you, Deceased is gone already. Like the 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 series, the miniseries kind of came and went, mm -hmm. um, and it was good. I I enjoyed it, but I mean, hey, that's not to say that you couldn't do anything. Because I I think I even said that hey, there's some more stuff that they could probably explore in in that world, and apparently they are. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, so here we go, and that's going to be in February, starting not far away. No, it is not. Um, so it's coming out kind of uh, rapid fire. Uh, <laughs> Funny. Right. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, the next uh, bit of news is kind of ironic, kind of think makes me think of makes me think of the 90s um, hip hop clothing lines. Um, Streetwear inspired Batman clothing line is debuting on Black Friday. So a new line of Batman themed clothing is coming out through DC sister company Rooster Teeth and its lifestyle brand Achieve. The streetwear inspired line includes three t shirts, a hat, a hoodie, and long sleeved shirt. Uh, it's scheduled to go on sale November 29th at 12.01 a.m. Central Time on the website. That's specific. So if you, if you, that name sounds familiar to you, I totally forgot that uh, Warner Brothers does own Rooster Teeth. Wow, weird. Uh, Rooster Teeth, the people that brought you Red versus Blue, the uh, the Halo um, machinima thing. Also, Gen Lock, which is also which is um, um, a show and now a also a comic right. on DC. So Rooster Teeth is, does a lot of things. I think they have you know on YouTube and places. So wait, are they uh, Ruby? Also, R W B Y is also their 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 thing. If I'm not mistaken. All right. So, Apparently they got merch. Also, if you're watching the video, you can see some of the stuff. It doesn't look like bad looking stuff. You know, sure, cool. I like this the one with the, the shirt with the Batman bill on it. That's all. That's all right. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Bendis and Oming powers uh, returns <laughs> again, and it's bigger than than era, ever. So the Eisner Award-winning series Powers will return in March because it makes sense wherever that imprint, the, wherever that uh, imprint of his goes, or wherever he goes, that print, print, imprint follows at some point. Um, but will return in March. But this time, it's an all-new original graphic novel that writer Brian Michael Bendis is calling the massive last story of Christian Walker. <clears throat> Uh, the new hardcover titled Powers the Best Ever of Overnight Bendis with Powers co-creator Michael Avon Oming. Uh, the book and its extra material will celebrate 20 years of powers, while the story will also age the characters to 20 years older than their debut in 2000. Also worth noting that not too many people remember this, but before the whole uh, comics to... to um, the comics to, like, uh, TV shows and movies kind of was still burgeoning uh powers was also a short-lived show on psn that's the playstation network right the, so and i don't remember remember it uh i remember watching a couple of episodes but i don't remember finishing it because it didn't last that long but it was seemed to be all right but yeah anyway that was the thing this is the thing and it's coming up so okay uh, yeah next up um in sad news uh, artist Tom Lyle has passed away at the age of 66. Uh, he was uh, a longtime comic book artist who drew three Robin limited series, as well as co-created Stephanie Brown, AKA the spoiler for DC. And he actually designed uh, the Scarlet Spider's hoodie and tights costume for Marvel. And he did some Spider-Man work in recent years. Uh, Tom Lyle had served as a professor and internship coordinator at the, the Savannah College of Art and Design, otherwise known as SCAD. Um, apparently, uh, in October, he underwent surgery to remove a blood clot in his brain. This was following having had an aneurysm and re uh, resulting medically induced coma. Um, our condolences to the Lyle family on their loss. And, and, and to the comic book community. 
Indeed. And boy, if there was ever a need for universal health care and maybe possibly There's always a need. Yes, and unionizing of the comic book industry because this there's this is not the first nor the last time we have seen something like this with an artist or with a creator. Right. And there's only a select few there's only a select few creators who you know, via strokes of luck and or um serendipity have been able to make money um, you know, with or without creator own stuff. Exactly. So they can so that they can support themselves um as they get older and you know there's definitely a need for you know unfortunately a lot of those creators are passing away as yeah. time passes um you know the former actor uh program that turned into the hero initiative um is doing something but it's you know the, the, there's only so much they can do right so as a matter of fact go ahead and take the next one yeah, so the the family of Tom Lyle is seeking support uh, for covering uh, health care costs by setting up a GoFundMe page. So you can look that up on uh, GoFundMe. Um, uh, you know, the uh, the wife of Tom uh, Lyle is, um, you know, they, they, they've incurred a lot of um, medical costs. So they need some help with uh, payment of those costs. Yeah, it's it's a sad thing that somebody somebody mentions on Twitter. It's like GoFundMe is the the insurance is is the new insurance company. Mm. I'm paraphrasing, but that that's basically how it is, and that's a very sad state of state of the world. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, if you if you have something in you, uh, if you have some, you know, if you can do so, get that. It's definitely, no one has to, should have to go through that kind of stuff. Uh, first look, Copiel, Copiel, uh, Cooter, Serentino, Walter, Epstein join in on Jason Aaron's Thor finale, King Thor number four. So all of those are artists, and I guess they are doing, um, they're doing interiors or they're doing covers? I don't know, but they, uh, um, it looks like they're, they're, covers. Yeah, I was about to say some of them are, uh, have, have definitely had, um, uh, contributions to Aaron's run, so. Uh, let's say it might be both because I see I see very covered by Mark Demondo, Steve Epting. Um, I mean, maybe some interiors for from the rest of the rest of these people, which I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but there's some preview pages here if you are so inclined as to check them out. All right, all right. So speaking of Thor number one, Marvel put out a trailer which promises un- an unimaginable scale for. Donny Keats's new story that's going to follow up on Jason Aaron's story. It's good. It's a hard act to follow. All right. Um, there is, you know, I have the only misgiving I have about this. I like uh, Nick Klein's preview work on this. It's really, you know, epic looking. Is the the whole headband designed on design on this new version of Thor? I'm like, what the hell is that? But that what the whole arm, the whole custom anyway. Well, the, the the what's funny is that the costume uh, reminds me of some of the the light up aspects that have come uh, over the the aughts, mm-hmm. you know, since the since Thor rebooted with uh, Koipel and Straczynski. Mm-hmm. So you know when he was wearing kind of like the armored look, so mm-hmm. he definitely tried to incorporate like kind of like a light up look on his you know like to emphasize the lightning, um, but the but the obviously the to me at least. What really stuck out was the whole hair, head, and that weird headband thing. Right. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, Kate and, and Nick Klein are a quality uh, creative team, so we'll see how that goes. Whatever. When that Marvel uh, legend come out, you know you're going to get it. Maybe. It depends on how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, Marvel. i got plenty of Thors. That, uh, you know, don't, don't, let's not get that twisted. I've definitely got plenty of Thors. True, true. Uh, we kind of already talked about this, but yeah, Marvel Stealth cancels Loki series after five issues. Like I said, we uh, kind of mentioned that earlier. Um, sad to see that one go because that was actually an interesting book, even though even you know it was kind of just hitting its drive. But I don't know the reason for it. I'm sure somebody was probably say low sales, but I'm not sure if that was actually the case. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say here, but so yeah. Next, all right. Um, apparently, in the um, 2099 Alpha number one that came out this week, seeds for uh, 
the future god of thunder's arrival were laid were, were laid down so yeah we didn't necessarily well we, yeah because you hadn't read it and right. i didn't get into it but yeah there's there's definitely some especially the big the very beginning of the book in fact um um kind of loses that and i won't scroll down to the the page sure even though that page doesn't necessarily say as much as the the pages after that or before that but yeah so some things go check that out i uh-huh. think um Valkyrie, Vain, Valkyrie Jane Foster says goodbye to Al Ewing and hello to new co-writer. So yes, Al Ewing is leaving um, Valkyrie Jane Foster. Sadly, Ooh. I mean he's got other you know things. I, I actually talked to him about Valkyrie. He said he had something co- uh, cooking coming up, so it must be something that drops before February. Hmm. Uh, maybe so. Ageless writer Tarun Gronbeck. Uh, will join Jason Aaron as co-writer. And, and I've saw something on Twitter from Jason Aaron about this. Um, he's basically, you know, uh, uh, hey, Al, Al Ewing did, did the damn thing on it and you know, he will be missed, but you know, yada, yada. Some, you know, you know, basically the other, the, this other dude's coming in and it's going to be some good stuff, supposedly. So uh, Grunbeck, is, who is Norwegian, says Shio uh bring her first hand cultural perspective to the Asgardian tale. Okay. Oh. So, cool. Um there's some commentary I could probably make on uh, on that. No part of it good, part of it bad, but I'm just gonna let that go. So hey, the Valkyrie's been pretty good. Hopefully it will continue to be. Yes, that's the hope. I really enjoyed the sh- the the book. So yeah, uh, she says, I am endlessly excited to be working in this particular part of the Marvel Universe. I am born and raised in Norway, and the myths and sagas of the old world were part of my daily life growing up. I am literally named after Thor. Turun uh, means to love Thor. Wow. That's, know, pretty, right? that's pretty on the nose. That's pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty on the nose. That wasn't meant to be. I don't know what uh, Gwen Beck said in the announcement on Marvel.com. I've read and loved every part of Jason's tremendous work on the Ace Guardian book over the past few years. I couldn't be happier to now be writing Jane, my favorite Thor, and to bring her to yet the undiscovered parts of the Nine Realms. Uh, there are actually ten, but we will let, let that go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to see where it takes us. Hmm. That's still a shame that uh, uh, Al Ewing is leaving mm-hmm. the book. All yeah, right. Sure. Uh, next up, um, apparently in the most recent issue of Squirrel Girl, which is, I believe, the last issue of the book. It was, yep. Uh, she got a major cosmic power boost from uh, the Big Purple. <laughs> yes, the Big Grape himself. Um, mm-hmm. So, the, yeah, apparently... The well, according to the- the big tuning fork. Indeed. A big hint, hint. Right. Uh, apparently, uh, at least this one panel, or at least what's one part of this page, suggests that he gave her the ability to temporarily uh, breathe in space. Okay. Uh, whether that's just it or not, I don't know. And according to this panel, it's just, it basically says, I made it so that you can breathe in space, but is, but is, but is this just for now, or is it a permanent power boost? I'll never tell. <laughs> Which you know that sounds like um you know that's definitely um I totally forgot who's writing this book uh, that that their sense of humor though so yeah I don't know that was a thing cool um Spider Woman returns in new solo ongoing series so Jessica Drew who was also in who was in um uh, Strike Force which there was a, a an amusing um couple of panels in that uh, um dealing with her. Um, and the rest of the team, uh, you should go check it out. I thought it was funny anyway. It was um, good. Uh, it says Jessica Drew is returning as Spider Woman, which she hasn't left, but okay. In a new solo ongoing title launching in March 2020, written by Carla Pacheco and with art from uh, Perry Perez, the series puts Spider Woman in a mysterious new job, maybe Justice Magazine. That's just me paraphrasing. I mean, that's just me speculating. I thought that's very serious. Uh, take out a mysterious new foe. Uh, she says, I love Spider-Woman, and I'm incredibly excited to share the series with both new and old Jessica Drew fans alike. Is that uh, Pachico in the series announcement? Uh, this is big. Can't miss over-the-top action, some very surprising Venom blasts from the past, and also tons of hel- helicopter explosions. Okay. So, cool. 
I'm like, is Carla Pacheco related to Carlos Pacheco? No, I'm not kidding. I know, I know you're not, but you know. Yeah, like, you know, like talk about keeping it all in the family, right? Well, I mean, hey, you know, that happens in a lot of places. I mean, I don't, we, and we don't know, you know. So, I mean, there are uh, cases that we already know that of similar name people that are not related. So, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it, it, it's just uh, something that. Uh, came to mind just now yeah, yeah that, i mean obviously that, that's that is an obvious thing that will happen in cases like that so you know, no fault in you uh, you know of course got to look it up on wiki you know see if there's a wiki or something but yeah i'm kind of looking forward to that because uh, i like jessica she's uh, she's a uh, underused character definitely all righty uh next up uh let's see after i click away from looking for who carla pacheco is related to um mr sinister in mr sinister infiltrates marvel strike force the 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 online video game with the marauders faction so this is not the dawn of x marauders this is the og marauders featuring Sabretooth and mystique uh, both of which are already in the game, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, he's just uh, and the the next in line for that. So, alrighty. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. There's not really else to say about that. It's good. Good. Um, good mobile game. If you if you haven't checked it out, uh, Marvel sends cease and desist letter to NYC Council Member Ben Kalos. What do you uh, do? Uh, apparently, uh, there was a story that the uh, graphic novel. Brought to you of the Captain Marvel and superhero inspired political email by New York City uh, Council Member Ben Kellos, who is running for Manhattan Borough President. Marvel didn't take too kindly to the political email and sent him emails telling him to stop using Marvel's intellectual property and campaign materials. Uh, Kellos tweeted the letter saying he got a kick out of it. Okay. Which is is slightly kind of weird because I don't think Marvel said anything about the the police doing uh, putting Punisher logos on their on their yeah on not their, officially yeah so not that's officially, but I think what it I, I think I think what's what's what I think is different from that is they have had so much uh, trouble with certain logos you know certain um, decals being produced um uh on so, so many unlicensed decals being produced sure. that, oh, yeah. I think, that a little harder right i think this is a little easier for them to address but um you know especially with the advent of um what we call it like vinyl sticker cutting well plus in in in, in this case you know the, I, I, obviously they despite the leanings of you know certain heads of or a, a particular head of marvel um you know they don't want to come out as being thought to be associated with, you know, a, right. a, a political leaning one way or the other. So I, I get why they would do this one, for mm -hmm. sure. So anyway, and there's a copy of the letter uh, uh, in the article, if you're so inclined. All righty. Uh, next up, um, the brand new Rye series um, based on the Valiant comic makes its action-packed debut next Wednesday, November 20th. So it made it this past Wednesday. And metal band A Sound of Thunder is celebrating the Can't Miss comic with the song Break. Okay, and Dan Abnett writes the lyrics for the song. Yeah, go figure. Uh, yeah, those lyrics from Dan Abnett, who's writing this, is offered exclusively through the band's Kickstarter as a companion to their new album, uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay. There's a... Um, there's a um, um, a Valiant comment that came out this week called Roku. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, which uh, and my first thought was like, wait, they made a comic off of the uh, of the the, the streaming stick. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The song was called Break Free. It was just a small editing uh, bit in our news sheet, but the song is called Break Free. Sure. All good. That's, did I say otherwise or? No, no, no. It's it was just cut off. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that was the thing, but yeah, so, th and that, it looks like, um, what if, I don't know, I, I haven't read it, so I don't know, but I thought that was funny for the name alone, and then, because the first thing I was like, okay, the streaming thing, and the, then I thought, wait, Roku from last, uh, Avatar Last Airbender? <laughs> that is not it also, but apparently it's some woman with Medusa-like hair, and who's a 
Chair or something. I don't even know. I'm even gonna get to it, but it was kind of weird to see that. <laughs> not not and it not being you know related to the couple of things that I just mentioned. Anywho, moving along. Uh, puberty plus powers plus politics equals image in Skybound's heart attack, which I think you know, before the show you said you were interested in. But right, I just happened to see it was an interesting title name for a number one issue, so I was kind of curious to uh, look into that this week. I just didn't have a chance. We, given how many books we had to read this week, um, I should have put it a little higher up on the list. Sure. Uh, in the new near future, Love, Politics, and Superpowers mixed together for Image Comics and Skybound's Heart Attack, debuting this week. Uh, the new ongoing series by writer Sean Kittleson, Mortal Kombat 11, uh, Eric Z- Zawadzki, The Dregs, and Michael Garland, Leviathan, I don't know those other ones, tells the story of two superpowered teens called Variant Variants in the scenario, trying to survive together uh, the, in the harsh reality of being feared and essentially hunted so sounds slightly kind of like an x-men ish type situation the theme okay. of heart attack is that's me thinking that i don't know uh, the theme of heart attack is that even when it seems like the whole world is against you all it takes is one person reaching out their hand to you one loving connection to change your life it doesn't explain so. cool. okay cool cool yeah. uh well, i guess last but not least apparently we didn't have any black adam news um but um transformers g-shock uh transformers and g-shock has a collaboration uh for a uh, figure and watch and it's a special release it's set for december of this year it's the dw 5600 tf19 set box set if you're watching the video you can see said uh transforming g g g g shock watch i was say g unit Oh Lord. Um, so yeah, it is apparently uh well obviously it's like a it's a watch, just a Casio mm-hmm. watch just in itself. And it's got um if you're watching your video, you can see this, but it's also the display around it is a transformer and which in which the, the watch itself can go into and looks like trans, uh Optimus Prime. Um that's pretty cool. I would want that. However, this thing is like uh what is it, hundred and twenty dollars or something like that? Uh, sure. We'll, we'll go with that. It's a money, um, and uh, it says thirty thirty thousand thirty thousand yen. I don't know what that translates to in 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 uh, America. Probably not cheap. Oh, it's definitely not. Yeah. Uh, um. So yeah, but it looks good. Like I said, you can check it out, and that is the thing. Apparently, there's like two different versions of it. I, we should uh, I showed this to uh, I sent this to. Uh, to Dirt, who's also a Transformers fan. <laughs> it was like, man, like that price. I'm like, yeah, but darn if it doesn't look nice. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but uh, And actually, is it is not the last story, but I just didn't put it in because I alluded to this earlier. Um, and granted, this is slightly old news, but I just wanted to bring it up because it was it kind of came up recently. So uh, Matt Rosenberg uh, had tweeted out, um, I think, uh, yeah, yesterday, February 2020, War Machine, Mockingbird, Quake, U.S. Agent, Forceworks. <laughs> so this is going to be a new Forceworks comic, and it's called Forceworks 2020, and those characters are going to be in uh, are in the book. And I'm like, okay, I'm down, except for the fact that U.S. Agents are involved. Because I <laughs> never like U.S. Agent in Forceworks or just general. That's just me. Hysterical. Um, so yeah, that's, that, but that's the thing that's going to happen. Um, and the, the article was basically about uh, Force Works, Machine Man, Iron Heart, and more getting uh, titles that are launching out of Iron Man 2020. Yes, I was about to say, I remember that part of the story. Right. That was coming out of Iron Man 2020. Yeah, so. we might have, I think we might have had a similar article that when that happened, like, or when the, the thing I don't, happened, but right. I don't remember. I think it involved, I don't think it described the characters in the team books. And I don't remember Force Works being mentioned. Otherwise, I would have been. But I don't remember them talking about who's going to be on the team. You're right. right. Um, so yeah, and apparently, according to this article, like there's all of there's again, like it's coming out of the Iron Man 2020 stuff, and uh, every book is going to be nicknamed 2020, just like the 2099 stuff. Force Works, Rescue, Iron Heart, Iron Age, Machine Man, and Weapons uh, EXE are all coming out of that. 
So, yeah, I guess this is, you know, we've kind of been talking about this event, sort of, kind of. This, you know, Tony Stark's dying, Arnold, they think it's taking its place, and, you know, it goes from there. And if you're watching the video, you can see the checklist there. I got it. Order. I got so. it. All right, cool. Um, I guess before we wrap, I just wanted to talk about this Black Adam stuff. So I'm going to just shoot Roddy Cat the link of what I'm looking at. Um, uh, let's see. Was it the recent news that... Okay, yeah, it is. So I'm going to put it up. Right. No, I, I just wanted to... Uh, yeah, I, I shot the link to Roddy Cat just so that we could... Uh, kind of chit chat about this before we close the show tonight because um, god forbid we closed that early um J- dwayne johnson's black adam movie has gotten um a a, a, fir- a firmish let's say firmish date the film mm-hmm. is scheduled to arrive in theaters december 22nd 2021 production is expected to kick off july 2020 and in other news surrounding this alleged release, The Rock says the Justice Society of America are coming to the Black Adam movie. So while the movie won't appe- it won't feature an appearance by Zachary Levi Shazam, it will introduce DC's original superhero team to the DC extended universe, the Justice Society of America. Uh, so, you know, I mean... That's kind of interesting, um, I think. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> so, seen that coming. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, so some would argue that this could also give this movie, if it ever happens, a time frame. Right. I guess depending on which version of the Justice Society to use. I mean, exactly. Obviously, well, yeah, because I mean, obviously, if they go with like an original version, this would be set a little earlier than say a current ish version which is still kind of a you know right i mean i believe they're going to go back in time because this is supposed but I, I the 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 gist is supposed to be that this is a precursor to the zachary levi shazam which is set in present day but so, yeah um, going back a certain amount of time it's all a matter of how much despite the two movies not necessarily connecting uh mm-hmm. i mean they're they're connected in the sense that um uh they're not you know, you know, it's not necessarily a prequel. Let's say, let's put it that way. Yeah, right. Sure, mm-hmm. I know, but I know because remember with this whole speculation going into the Shazam movie that whether uh, you know, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson was going to somehow have a end credit scene as Black Adam, just kind of convey some kind of you know mm-hmm. continuity or something, uh, but that never happened. Apparently, uh, I still have yet to see Shazam. Actually, really, it's not terrible. It's no, the, no, there's, I, a, there's a couple of cringy moments, and the last, uh, you know, like if you're not well versed in in uh, Shazam slash Captain Marvel stuff from DC, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the what you call it, the um, the stinger, one of the stingers at the end is just like, uh, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's see. I remember the old Seven A show that I used to watch back when I was a youngin. That's there you go. Awesome on um uh, Disney Plus which really had that much did not have that much to do with the the the, the uh the comic itself L- very loosely that and uh, Mighty Isis w- w- also was you know a show at that time which I don't think they're ever going to put on Disney Plus right <laughs> for probably possibly some obvious reasons but that had nothing to do with the you know. exactly exactly oh so, yeah so, but this thing I, w- you know what let's just see something from this thing. Cause this thing has been in various states of on and off for the last couple of years. Like mm-hmm. this is almost of Gambit quality, except for people probably want this more than Gambit, the Gambit movie. I mean, if we're being honest. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, that aside, and let's face it, it's attached to the rock. So. Exactly. That was also the other thing I was about to say. Uh, he would have more pull into getting this done as opposed to, no offense to Channing Table, but very much offense to. Yeah, just, just, you know, just, just you know, it, it, it sort of matters. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. So, that being the case, like I said, I, it's, I'm still a wait and see. Like I said, yeah, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. If we actually see something from this, great. If we don't, it'll just. Of being a pile, whatever. All righty. 
So I think that wraps up our show for tonight. Before we get to our last ad read, um, actually, let me get the last ad read, and then we'll talk about next week's plans for Thanksgiving week. So uh, um, our last ad read of the night is for My Comic Shop. Today's podcast is sponsored by My Comic Shop. Go to cspn.us, then click on the Keep Our Podcasts free link at the top of the page. From there, click on the My Comic Shop banner and order from a vast selection of new releases, back issues, vintage classics, graphic novels, and more to be delivered right to your door. If you do not have access to a local comic shop, which you should um, uh, go to and support, um, if you don't have that kind of access, you can order your books online through my comic shop through cspn.us. Do it today. Or comicsology if you want to go digitally. That's all the same. But we're, yes, but local comic shop if you very much can do so. Absolutely. Granted, uh, my comic shop's got a books giving sale, which I guess is their Thanksgiving thing. And Black Friday is the thing that's coming up also in various shapes and form. Yay. Uh, that being the case, we're coming to the end of the show, and yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do about next week's show. I don't think we're going to have a show next week. I, it's because it's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, if anything does pop up, please pay attention to our social media accounts. Um, you know, stuff will pop off. Maybe there's some Mandalorian stuff to discuss. Who knows? Yeah, one of maybe one of our uh, I, I would almost suspect one of our other co hosts will probably jump on the door show by himself since he can't be bothered to do a show. Let me stop. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. I'm sorry. I apologize. But no, but seriously, one, I mean, it. A show could happen, a show probably won't happen, or something could happen around that weekend. Even if it wasn't done on Thursday, something could possibly happen. We'll let you know one way or the other. Just go to our social media sites, like Agent 70 said, which would be for myself, Roddy Cats, um, on Twitter, News Nurse Need on Twitter, uh, CB Caps on Instagram. I very much need to, to update that, and I got some stuff I just hadn't put them up. Uh, Agent underscore 70 on Twitter and Instagram. PC underscore dirt on Twitter. Uh, Pop Culture Nets on Twitter. Pop Culture Network.com. And his umbrella site they're in. And of course, the Osiris that is, is Tim D O G G 9 8 on Twitter. Uh, CB Cron on Twitter. That is the Combo Chronicles uh, um, uh, Twitter account. Also, the Click Nation. On Twitter, that's D K L I Q N A T I O N, theclicknation.com. Uh, also, combo resources where you're over writing this face off. Which reminds me, I need to talk to him about getting something for theclicknation.com, but I will have to do that later. Uh, you can find this here podcast on Cold Slither Podcast Network. That's CSPN.us. Do it today. You'll be joining us soon, 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 soon. You can also find, um, wait, that's it, uh, us on Google Play, Apple iTunes, aka Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the Coast Leather Podcast Network's SoundCloud page. And that is it for the show. Uh, if we do not have a show next week, have a wonderful and safe uh and fooling but not too fooling that you just can't drive anywhere thanksgiving yes um, thanksgiving um black friday be safe out there if you're so if you go out out there and do all that just be aware that some of those sales are not extra sales and they mark up stuff yep <laughs> always be wary of that because that's some Sweet. people people don't, don't seem to think that, that, that much about and of course, Cyber Monday will also be coming, which as as the newest thing, which capitalism lives, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being the case, uh, we will see you when we see you. If not next week, then the week after that, same time, Thursday uh, nights, nine thirty ish p.m. on Thursday nights when we record, or uh, the day or two after that when the show gets put out by the Coastal the Podcast Network when they decide to do that, which is usually I think at this point is like Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Um, which, yeah. Um, and hopefully the show notes will actually be in the, the show page like I've been trying to put in there, which I will talk to them about that also, hopefully. But with that, folks, um, this has been Combo Chronicles. Be safe, be well, be wonderful. Peace. <laughs>
Peace. One. I love it when a plan comes together.